What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Four Podcast. I am your host, Anthony Zaragoza, and today on the channel, I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing two brothers that literally gave me the best first time Six Flags experience I've ever had at Fright Fest, and we made a bunch of great content together, and uh, it was a lot of fun. They had a lot of fun. Please welcome my guest, Blue Clown, Pink Crown, the Exile Brothers. How you guys doing? Yo, what's going on, everybody? Pink Clown here, the best pink and black uh, striped <laughs> clown at Fright Fest uh, in Southern California. <laughs> and how's it going, everybody? What's up? It's me, Nate, aka the Blue Clown. I was feeling blue, but not anymore because we're here doing another podcast. There it is, and man. And I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where do you even start with these two, man? These are some of the funniest, and and they gave me, like I said, they gave me the the best time at Six Flags. I, I had never been to Fright Fest. I was coming. Um, our good friend Trix, uh, she's been telling me, she's been talking my ear off about it, and I was like, you know what? I gotta go support her. And little did I know, I was gonna run into even more than I was looking forward to, and it was worth it. And I I went three times that year. Uh, for those who don't know, I live in Buena, I live like near Buena Park. So that's, you know, three times out there, but it was oh, worth, yeah. it was worth the trip every single time because you two and, and a handful of other people made that experience the best. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, thank dude. you. That is, yeah, that's awesome Great to hear. To I appreciate hear. the, uh, that's a big compliment, big compliment. And I'll, I'll, I'll drive to another state to go see you guys at a haunt. So <laughs> that's just. Thank you. You know, but <laughs> the, how does, okay, let, let's go back. Cause you yeah. know, I, I, I know uh, a brief uh, history about you guys, about how you started and whatnot, but for, for the, for those who don't know, and those who are fans of you guys uh, who've come visit you six flags many times or for the first time ever, uh, how did it all begin for you guys? What, 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 what was, what drove your guys' love for, for haunt Halloween and, and horror and all that? You know, I think it um, started started in like 2008, 2009. We went to our first haunt. You know, we we used to like look up reviews about these places, or look it up online. You know, back when like theme park uh, updaters were becoming like a big thing. You know, right. and I remember going on different websites and looking up like pictures of updates of things. Like for instance, uh, like theme park reviews, a big one. I used to go on their website. Matt and I would look out on our computer, be like, oh look, they're doing like a Halloween events. Like how fun for like Universal for Knots, and then for Fright Fest. We just so happen to have Six Flags passes, and since you can go to Fright Fest for free if you have a Six Flags pass, we uh, after school we we convinced our mom to drive us out there. We're like, hey, can you come drive us? Or where do you want to go to Fright Fest? And that was the first time we ever went to a haunt. That was in 2008. That was in 2008. So Oof. Matt was in high school, I was in middle school. Yeah, that was like the first time we ever went to a haunt. Uh, we just kind of fell in love with it that that same year. We we're like, oh, we should start scaring people like. Doing little things. I, I believe while we were both trick or treating with our different friend groups, we started scaring, um, and then it kind of just snowballed from there. I can let Matt pick up from here, and then I'll, I'll chime in in a second. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we kind of that, that's what we never really grew up with, uh, with much horror, with much horror, you know, exposure or background or anything like that. And then we just started like, getting into it, seeing like a haunt for the first time, and being like, oh my gosh, it's, it's almost like it's the entertainment factor here is is amazing and like the creativity that goes into horror and that's what got me into the horror genre for everything from film and just you know themes and all that to like creating things in the horror world it was just that creativity that goes into all of it and seeing it through a haunt you know so we really didn't we weren't horror fans and then become haunt fans we actually like were exposed to horror through haunts and that was by going to fright fest 2008 and then 2009 we hit up all of them yeah yeah, and that's that's a great point. To be to be fair, to not just like horror, but events and entertainment in general. I uh, never thought I would make a like try to make a career like a name for myself via the entertainment industry. And uh, up until we started going to haunts and started working it, which is kind of funny. So without visiting Fright Fest that first year in 2008, I I would have probably had a completely different life trajectory, which is kind of crazy to think about. Because the funny thing is, honestly, yeah. here, here's here's what's kind of funny is that. The more and more of these podcasts that we do, like we, we talk about like our experience, like doing haunts and stuff, I feel like I'm finding, I feel like I always find out something new about myself. Like while I'm talking, like I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, you know, that is a good point. And yeah, I, I, it's, it's hilarious to think that if I never did Fright Fest, I would never be into events or horror. Now I love horror. I love the horror genre. Right. I'm a big horror movie fan. Um, you know, like I, I just think it's super creative and I love Halloween. It became my favorite holiday. Uh, and that, 
that is, I used to like Halloween when I was a kid, but not, not this much, you know? And you, you look at, for instance, there's like certain haunt cultures, right? Like look at the haunt culture around like not scary farm, for instance, right. you have people who, who work this event who have um, been, you know, they say, Oh, I was going here. My, my parents, like my dad took me here when I was a kid. And then growing up my whole life, I, was, I couldn't wait till an audition. I couldn't wait to audition. You know what I'm saying? That's like people have been going to these things for like so long. Totally not the case. Like I, I know Matt, Matt is a little older than me. He's about three and a half years older than me. I was in, um, I was in eighth grade. Yeah, I was in eighth grade the first time I went to a haunt. You know, so I was fairly young. I was like 13, I think, or 14, 13 or 14 years old. So it wasn't until I was like 13 I actually went to my first haunt. You know, so it's kind of interesting to think about. Like I didn't grow up with this at all. I hated horror movies when I was a kid. Never really watched it. Never really liked Halloween all that much. Besides just like, oh yeah, good candy. It's fun to dress up. That's about it. Right. Um, and yeah, it's kind of it's, it's crazy how this kind of just propelled everything. Oh man, I mean it, it's it's you know it's I, I look at you guys today, and you guys bring a whole like energy that I had never seen at at haunt before. Now uh, when I say that, you know you you see you know for a good example that's a good equal to your guys' zone is a you know carnival at Not Scary Farm. You know that the whole kind of the aspect of the, the clowns and stuff, and and those guys over there, they do they do a, a terrific job at what they do over there too. Um, but but the level of, of interaction and and um, just all out, you're just just being funny all night and stuff, and, and the fact that you guys can keep that up all night and keep the energy going no matter how tired you guys are, you guys you guys bring that that energy that I just never seen at any haunts before, and and, and I and I knew when I went the first time I had to go back a second time, and a second time turned into a third time, and uh, it, we we did some funny stuff along the way, but just just sitting in in city under siege all you know all night, I would just like. I'm sorry, other scare zones. I want to go show you love, but I'm afraid if I leave this scare zone, I'm, I'm going to miss something, and I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> so j just seeing your guys' energy out there and, and from hearing where you, how you guys, you know, started and came up and stuff, it just, it just you know, I'm just blown away. I, like I said, I've never seen anything like it. And, and to, to, for you guys to continue doing that all night, you know, that's, that's, no, that's no easy job yeah. right there. And, and I just I salute you guys for that, for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I really yeah, appreciate hearing you. that and glad, glad it's making an impact because we really, we legitimately lose like 20 pounds a year on that. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. And <laughs> um, it's weight wise. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, besides the weight I lost for my ex-wife, but that's a different story, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyways, yeah, uh, no, with, I had to throw at least one, right? It's, yeah. I mean, you know, Anthony I think it's just a, every time I see you now, there's gotta be one. I mean, we, we, we've talked, you know, <laughs> Some stuff happened with us in the last couple of months where we were just like, hey, I need you to say this joke. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, it's kind of funny. You know, we're, you know, because, like, I originally thinking of it, I was kind of like, oh, yeah, we're kind of like, you know, Matt and I, we're, we're students of the game because we, we, like, have been watching this stuff. But, like, like I said before, now that I'm thinking about it, we really aren't because we, we didn't start even thinking about haunts or, like, doing scare acting until we were – you know, into like our teenage years um, right. compared to some people who like grew up with this. Um, so it, it is different. I, I think a, a big part of it comes from, uh, like I said, just like loving the event so much. Like we went to like that one, I, I remember going to the 2008 Fright Fest so vividly. And then, which is crazy. It's my earliest haunt memory. Like I remember going through that first maze ever, like the first one we ever went through. And then the next year being like, oh my God, that was fun. Let's do all of them next year. So the next year coordinating, uh, with like rides and stuff because because you got to imagine this before we could drive right right so, like who's whose parents gonna take us out and then you know we, <laughs> we live you know about 45 minutes from universal and from six flags but not to mention a probably like an hour where we live when we were going out probably like an hour hour and a half from knots or right. more you know so getting down to these places is a little difficult for us so like you know coordinating that and then being like 2009 we hit all three we did magic mountain then we did universal then we did horror a uh, uh, scary farm and it was just like the, the craziest like most fun month i've ever had i remember just being like oh my god it was so much fun and like going to school the next weekend and like tell people like, oh you went to the, like how was it how was it you know like talking to my friends about it and like, you guys gotta go next year it's so much fun so like seeing all this stuff and then you know like saying and seeing the different zones and stuff and then eventually it, to the point where we were making our own haunted houses as well so then we we kind of really got our start doing home haunts okay making our own like 
uh, the first big thing we did was uh, we made like it wasn't a haunted house, but it was like a scare. It was a home haunt scare zone. Okay. Uh, at our at one of Matt's friends' house, who had a pretty big driveway, right. and we were able to set this whole thing up. So I don't know if you want to talk a little more about that, but it's, it's kind of hilarious. Like looking back on like the quality of like what we did. I, I think it was pretty pretty honestly. I would say it's impressive for a bunch of high schoolers to like put this together. Oh, you know, a bunch man. of seniors and freshmen to put this together was was was, was interesting, right. for, to say the least. It's where the imagination yeah. runs wild right there. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. We took inspiration from all these places too. So we were making things like, you know, at one point we got up to like a, a 400 or, or 500 square foot on a house that wow. you actually walk through. And we were like mm-hmm. building this in the street. And like, you know, we got to the point where we were doing like mimicking what we saw at these haunts. So we did like strobe triggers mm-hmm. <laughs> for this actress to pop out certain things like just audio systems so like i'll still go to theme parks to this day go through a maze and be like oh they didn't have an audio system in there the whole time that was just a silent yeah. maze i'm sure you've seen that too i have so, like you know we had like a full blast of like audio system blasting like horror music or like you know whatever fit the theme of the rooms and like just like things like that like that you know it was literally like we were just mimicking what we would see yeah and we're like, finally just- we were just like all right this is a lot of work for two nights or one night why don't we just try getting paid for this right <laughs> straight up and you know it, like he said there's a lot of testing things out a lot of um trying out different things um like the first big and like just just trial and error the first big thing was a strobe trigger right the strobe triggers are like the easiest honestly pretty easy to do if you if all you need literally is a strobe light and a power bar that's like like an extension cord that has a switch that's it there it you is you just hit the switch you just flick the switch um we we ended up getting these little um automatic christmas light like devices that like little boxes that are meant to be plugged into christmas lights and you have a little remote and you hit it on that way you can turn your christmas lights on from inside the house right we got them from target and then we literally use those for strobe light triggers for our haunts like we oh. just like have i would have like my prop in my hand then i would just tape like the little the thing around it yeah. and it's a little remote hit on and off that's it it's pretty simple and, and effective you know home hunting um, and bargaining you got to do it man it's, home, it's home hunting the best. and bargaining and i'm shocked like for being just two dudes you know matt who like i said was a senior at the time and me who was a freshman uh or again a little later on when we were a little older as well doing things like going to like warehouse stores and buying wood and like making flats and putting up tarps and like doing all this like we did all this stuff and we had to because we had a street that didn't really have a driveway we had to make all this stuff like all these walls we'd like pre-make them and then we'd, right. we'd lay them flush against our side yard at our house because we couldn't block the street and then we had to get permission from like our neighbors and stuff to like block the street for halloween and then on the 20 like the 30th like as soon as we, we'd both come home from like school, I would come home from high school. He would come home from college. We'd put it all up with like, the help of a couple of friends in like one night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> going up and and then immediately having to bring it back down the next day or that night. You know, it's it's yeah it, yeah. I, like, I've seen people on do it, that. It's it's, imp- it's it's so impressive. It's crazy. Um, and just thinking about going from there to like you know then to, and, and eventually into fright fest. So yeah, that's that's what Matt was saying. It comes it comes a point eventually. You know, we were like. As soon as basically as soon as I turned 18, I was like, hey, we should go audition for for one of these haunts, you know, and then we were on the fence about Six Flags and Universal because those are just the closest ones to us. Right. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, so we decided on on Six Flags because we thought, oh, it might be a little easier to get into. And then we ended up just liking it so much we stayed and we just stayed for a lot of years. Oh, man. You know, we, we never left. That is uh, that is good. Now we're diving into yeah. the uh, the start of Six Flags. So, talk to us uh, going into that first interview. If you do, you remember what it was like, the nerves that I was feeling that, and 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 whatnot, and and just just hoping that you'll just get something, you know, just to, for a good start, just because you know you wanted to do this, and you, you're like, well, let's get paid to do it. We don't care what we get at this point. We just want to be part of this. Yeah, that was. You hit some of it on the head right there, but going into that first, this would be our first audition ever. Right. Um, Never (laughs) doing any of this. We were just like, man, hope we just get, hope we just get a job first of all. (laughs) We didn't, we, yeah, we had no idea what to expect. And, um, you know, the audition process thankfully was, was more forgiving than the audition process at, uh, at Knott's. Right. You know, so it wasn't like a situation where it was like, oh, pretend your body is a, a blender and uh, 
uh, there's uh, Jason Voorhees is pouring hot sauce into your hands and, and nails. And, you know, in terms of and you're like, go. And you're like, okay, what do I do? How, how on earth? You know, that's not really what uh, Six Flags does, thankfully. So, you know, we got prompts basically just portray, like, you're going to be a werewolf, you're going to be a clown, whatever, and just go ahead, give it to us. And, you know, very short, as, as least cringy as it as auditions could be, because if you're listening to this and you're about to go into an audition, every audition gets a little weird and it's, it's, it is uncomfortable and you have a panel of people looking at you while you pretend to be something stupid and you're not wearing any makeup. <laughs> I think that's just, I think that's just me in every interview. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. For some people, for some people, it's you in every interview. Uh, but yeah, if you are auditioning, there's a little bit of awkwardness. So, you know, we did it. I still remember, I'm yeah. not going to say it, Nate, you know, I'm not going to say what Nate said as a, as his clown character, but I still remember to this day, some of his, his go-to lines that he was coming up with on the spot. <laughs> And yeah, you got gotta you gotta imagine up up to that point, I had never done a clown before, and it's kind of funny looking back on it now, like my character now. Um, and what I I also remember that some of the stuff I said it was pretty cringy. I'm not gonna say it here. Uh, if you ever get me in person, I'll, I'll tell you. I'm just I ain't saying it on on. <laughs> it's gonna be recorded. You know, you know, the <laughs> next cringy. time I see you, the first time I'm gonna say it. The first time, the first uh, thing I, I'm gonna see you, I'm gonna be like, so so what'd you I say? Would love love to talk about it because it's so funny but it's um yeah it was cringy it was funny i was just having a good time with it matt did a werewolf i remember being like clown clown interesting i have no idea what to do for this never have done a clown before because like a lot of the characters i had played at our home haunts were a bunch of different stuff it was like a i played like a um like a deranged doctor i played like a butcher i played a couple different characters um like a, like a hooded like death type character for one of the home haunts. I never had played a clown before. I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. So I kind of just went for it, just based off of like what I what I knew, which at, at the time was literally just Heath Ledger's Joker from, right. <laughs> from the Dark Knight. That was what was big off, right there. And I kind of that was when it was really big. So yeah. kind of just went off of that, <laughs> you know, um, and just kind of went for it. And it was just so funny. And looking back on it now, if I would have auditioned with the clown character I have now. I, I probably wouldn't have gotten it. I just feel like they weren't ready for that kind of humor yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Six Flags, it, we, me and Matt get away with a lot of the joking we do is because they, we have a really, really good working relationship with the, the, the team over at, at Magic Mountain. So, right. you know what I'm saying? So we can get away with a lot of like jokes and stuff and break from the fourth wall. And because that's, that's a lot of what we do is just break the fourth wall. And they think it's hilarious. But if I were to do it then, they had no idea who I was. I just feel like it wouldn't have, uh, it wouldn't have, wouldn't have gone so well. Hey, man, everything's <laughs> meant for a reason, right? Yeah. I, I also remember being nervous as well. Because, yeah, I was like, I had no idea. Funny thing is, you know, Matt and I never were into, like, theatrics or entertainment, like I said before this. It was the first thing we ever did. Him and I were both, like, big into, like, sports in high school. Right. Um, and, in fact, my biggest regret of high school – like, I don't really regret much of my time in high school, but I wish – I would have been a part of like the theater department or the technical theater department on the side with sports as well. Cause I, I still am really happy I played sports. I love my, you know, playing sports and stuff, but I really wish Amber I was alert. able to. Amberline, I'm getting one too. I haven't got mine yet. Should be any second. Okay. Though. Yeah. That was my alert telling me I'm talking too much. <laughs> yeah, that was me. That was me. Sorry. Yeah. That was Matt sending me an alert. It was the um, Academy Awards. just like the, the music when they blew you off stage. <laughs> yeah. I know, right. But you know, yeah, it was, it was kind of funny. I had no audition experience whatsoever. So I just kind of went to this blind. I was pretty nervous. I had just bought a brand new phone case. I remember from my iPhone, it was uh, from the walking dead from season one where like Ooh. Rick's riding into, into the city on the horse. I was like, right. Oh, I love this phone case. I literally had opened it up the day before I had it for all of one day and I was so nervous as I was standing there kind of getting ready to go into the room. I threw my phone at the ground by accident. Like it slipped out of my hand. Ugh. Cause I was like, I was just kind of trying to like warm up and like stay limber yeah. and I accidentally like, threw it. And I just shattered my brand new phone case. I remember being like, Whoa, this is crazy. It was just a bunch of stuff happened. And then we went in did it. And then they didn't even tell us. Usually six flags is really good about telling you where you're going to be like pretty soon after right. the audition, like either that day or like shortly afterwards. Uh, we were being, we were put on as what they would call like a standby. They were kind of like, yeah, we're, we're kind of figuring things out for you. Basically they kept telling us until our dress, we didn't even know what we were going to be doing until dress rehearsal. Oh. Yeah. They really wanted to just, test you guys there, man. Straight up. Seriously, yeah. We couldn't prepare or anything. And we were, we were like, dude, I hope we, first of all, I hope we got it. We're like, okay, I think we got it. Cause like we went through all the paperwork. Why would they make us do all this paperwork? We right. didn't get it. And oh, then, yeah. um, you know, they pulled, they pulled just the two of us out of the group and we're like hey can you guys come with us and they took us to do a urinalysis and we're like 
Well, at first we were thinking we were the only two that didn't get it. And then we were like, oh, well, I guess they're having us do a urinalysis. That's probably good. At least we got a job. And then we were like, oh, I hope we can get in like the same area or same same house. You know, just like we didn't know even the terminology or anything. We are just like, oh, yeah. what if we could be together? That'd be fun. <laughs> I remember right. looking at him on the way home. Like he was driving our being like, we were kind of going through like in our heads, like what we would love. We're like, okay, how cool would it be if we both got scare zones? But what, how cool would it be if we both were in the same scare zone? And then we're like, okay, that's the top, right? Being together in the same scare zone. Number two was both being in scare zones, even if we're not in the same one. Number three was both being in the same maze. And then number four was like, just both getting jobs basically. Right. So we're like, as long as we both got it, we could work out something eventually. We had no idea if we were even working together. Um, and in fact, the, the us going into that audition group together because if you think about it, Matt, we really could have gotten split up outside if, if we would have just gotten the wrong numbers, right? The, right? We went into the audition together, like looking basically identical right. and like same height and stuff. And they, they that's exactly what they wanted because they had two twin characters up on Exile Hill. They had these two guys who were actually these twin characters who had been there for years, uh, who were like uh, five, six year long veterans who had just the like 2012 or like, yes, their last season, we're, we're not coming back. Like we're not gonna make it back next year. So they were like, we want to fill in like a, a twin spot right. on Exile Hill randomly enough. So that just so happened to be, hey, look, these guys look similar. Let's just cast them as the twin characters, unbeknownst to us. I mean, we didn't even know, you know, but yeah, so we didn't know that, but it kind of just really worked out in our favor. You know what I'm saying? It was kind of like the 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 accumulation of a bunch of different moving parts working together that got us to this Man. point. Yeah, and you know what? Just going there, you know, for the first time, um, and hearing, you know, stories and whatnot, uh, I always said that, uh, for those who, who've never been to Fright Fest now, and if you've been to Scary Farm, I've always considered, uh, in my head and probably to a lot of people that Exile Hill is basically the ghost town of, of Fright Fest. Like that was the, you know, the, the one that I hear, I heard about a lot going into this event, that and City Under Siege were the two that I always heard about. And so kind of going up there. And, you know, my first year going and checking it out, I'm like, I could see how this gets kind of ghost town vibes in a way. Like, this is cool. Like, they're doing their own thing. They got something going for them. And this is what what's really the big zone here. It's like this is the this is their ghost town. Like, they have their own established name for it, Exile Hill, and, and it works out for them. So, so seeing that scare zone, I was really blown away by it. Um, I, I really thought the whole downhill aspect of it, you know, I got to see some cool stuff, but uh, going into uh, getting your guys' role, like, what what was it like for you guys just kind of overall, just what were the nerves of going into that opening night? Like, it must have, especially because you guys just find out dress rehearsal, and so how does that even, how do you even go in, how do you even prepare for that? Well, we were stoked right off the bat when they were like, here, here's your slider stuff. We're like, what? You know, same area? <laughs> yep. You know, so we, and you're gonna that, be that, yeah, exactly. That really helped. That made, um, that made the whole thing like the, our energy levels are through the roof right off the bat. Then it's like this fun new atmosphere. You're like, all right, and you know, just your dress rehearsal like literally in 24 or in some cases 48 hours. Right. You're gonna be standing right here again in the same outfit, and like there's gonna be like thousands of guests walking past you, and you're just gonna go for it so little nerve wracking um but just you know already having that background of like oh i know what it's like to have people like in big groups walk up to us and us try to scare them or jump out and hide and you know you know the basic foundations already had sliding under our belts like these different little mini haunts we were doing based on what we saw on youtube and so kind of having that basis we i don't think we were were super nervous Nate. and correct me if i'm wrong if you were but i you know i wasn't super nervous i was just more like dude i cannot believe that this place that I've been going to since I was a kid is now paying me to come back here and walk around and essentially scare people in any way I want. If I want to hype and jump out and scare them, I can. If I want to be present and just run around, I can, you know, just depending on the night or whatever. So just that freedom was just like, you know, gave me incredible energy. So really not a lot of nerves. What about you, Nate? Yeah, I, I would uh, call it excitement more than anything else. I, I didn't I don't remember feeling that nervous. I remember just being like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Like, oh, my God, I can't believe we're sliding. Like, wow, that's cool. Like, like, I know what I'm doing mostly. But I, I you know, I think the thing is, too, that the gear they gave us, like the gear that Six Flags used to use before, like Matt and I were kind of able to 
help the sliding program evolve a little bit used to be um, just pretty basic. It was like ProTech knee pads with steel toe boots, which is like normal, just steel toe boots um, and the really, really cool gloves. So they've been, they've been giving us those awesome gloves every year we've been there. So awesome. that's like the one thing that hasn't really changed is the gloves, but yeah, they gave us knee pads and shoes, um, which if you ever slid with Protex or with just steel toe boots, especially before the metal gets exposed, you don't go very fast or very far. Right. So I'm kind of looking back on it. I'm glad because, you know, we're going downhill and stuff. You're not really going that far. And it kind of helped me ease into sliding, doing further, longer, faster slides, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't, I wasn't um, nervous. I was just excited. I was um, like, this is going to be so fun. I can't wait. You know, in my head, I was like, dude, I can't wait to like, I'm going to give it all of my energy. I'm going to go full in because I was used to just scaring on Halloween. Right. In fact, it's, it's one of the funniest things is that I always, I've told this story on a lot of different times before on a lot of different podcasts, but I will always tell it, especially for anybody looking to go into haunts is like, you're so excited your first night. I went so hard. I scared so many people, slid so many times that by 11 o'clock at night and keep in mind, we close at one. I was 11 o'clock at night. I had two hours to go, and I was sick to my stomach. I couldn't move. I couldn't walk. I have never ran that much in my entire life. And, and keep in mind, Matt and I both played like soccer our whole lives, which is a lot right. of running, a lot of moving. I have never gotten like – I've gotten sick from like working out and like you know conditioning, exercising and stuff, but never to that point. I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw up everywhere. Like, I'm, I can't do this. I'm so sick. I feel horrible. Um, I also didn't realize that they were okay with me just stepping off stage, like grab some water, or take a break. I thought that I had to wait until I got my 15 minute break and stuff. Uh, the next, like the next day I had like my manager approach me being like, Oh my gosh, heard what happened. Glad you're okay. Like if you didn't know this, like you're allowed to just step off, get water whenever you want. You don't have to wait until we send you on your, like your, your California mandated breaks, you know, like right. you can go whatever's best for you. Like you, like that's what we want. We want you to take care of yourself, you know? I was like, oh, that makes sense, right? I was thinking, like, well, this made a mistake. In fact, it was to the point where literally for the last two hours, I was sit there was there's two mazes up there, right? We have the one maze that's in that little building down the hill. Right. Uh, it was called Black Widow that year. In fact, I was sitting behind one of the walls at the exit of the maze with my back against it, just resting where I was out of the sight of guests, but I was still scaring people from the ground as they were coming out of the maze. So I was so scaring. I just couldn't move because I was so sick. So I was just sitting on my like on my butt with my back against the wall behind this little wall outside the maze, scaring people as people were coming out. So at least I could still be scaring people. Right. You know that's, what I'm saying? Which is which is hilarious. That, that is like, I think that's hilarious. You're 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 improvising away. You're like, I don't feel good, but I got a job to do, so I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, I was like and you know, I I was like, oh man, they're paying they're paying me this money to be here, you know, like I need to you know, this is probably like the biggest at this point was the biggest job I've had. Like I had jobs in the past but never like with this much responsibility i was like i need to show up you know it's my first day I, I can't they're putting all this they're giving me all this responsibility like i don't want to let let them down you know like right. funny funny i'm saying that now like looking back at all the work you know we've done for the place now it's like i definitely think they would say we, we didn't we've never let them down but um you know it's like it was so funny and then yeah sure enough got my makeup off got my costume off was grabbing my stuff out of the locker in the locker room and then ran to the bathroom and threw up Oh, for like man. 30 minutes 30 um, minutes damn then, you were there just yeah for just going huh i was just throwing up throwing up throwing oh, up man. and matt was like waiting for me we we you know i cleaned myself up and then we were like dude we need to get to, like let's go get some food or something because i was like i'm starving and i just threw up everything so i remember like the best the best sprite i've ever had in my entire life <laughs> on the way home from the first night ever of fright fest oh dude <laughs> i bet that felt so good drinking that especially it soothes your stomach and you're just like I am way better now, ready to go tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but we, we walked into our house that night, and Matt and I sat down on the, our couch, and we looked at each other, and we were like, can we do this? Like, can is this sustainable? Like, I don't know if I could do this. I don't right. know how much longer I could keep this up. This is, I am so tired right now. That was my first night ever. Craziest feeling. Um, and obviously, as you you all know we we didn't we were like no nope, we're, gonna, we're gonna go back you know we're gonna go back the next day we're not gonna quit um we both said let's let's finish the season see how we feel how we like it we'll come back next year depending on if we like it or not but this is tough this is a lot harder than i thought it was gonna be you know well, even honestly, coming from a sports background you know what we said we said the first time we were like let's just try and get through a, a weekend 
<laughs> remember and then, and then you know yeah. after the weekend we were like okay let's just okay that was better we re, you know we were like okay we need to play conservatively we need to you know be in this for a marathon not a sprint you know and so we refigured how we were going to do things and like okay not every scare has to be a slide not every scare has to be 300 percent you know stuff like that and we kind of scaled it back and then we we're like all right let's try to just get through the season then by the halfway through we we're like all right we can do this forever we got it we yeah. understand that <laughs> yeah, in fact, it was the Sunday, that first Sunday we worked. And we had these three dudes approach us who were like veterans of like four or five years. They walked up to Matt and I and were like, hey, like, you know, like you guys are doing really good out there. Like, hey, quick question. You guys know about the after parties we throw, right? And we're like, what? Like what after parties? They're like, yeah, we do these super cool after parties. They take place at TGI Fridays, which is, you know, rest in peace, TGI Fridays out in uh, Santa Clarita. We were like, every Sunday, a bunch of us go out there. We have these big parties and like everyone's invited. Like you guys should totally go. And we were like, oh, really? Like, you know, it's not like we thought like, we're, I was kind of like, oh, sweet. We're getting like invited to this like, cool party with these guys who have been doing this for forever, you know, and like, right. we're brand new. And we're like, oh, well, we can't tonight. We didn't know about it. Like we're, we're exhausted. We want to go home. But next weekend, we're going to go for sure. So the second weekend, I remember going and being like, oh, this is so cool. Like, oh my God, this is so much fun. And then us coming back and then spreading the word to other new people who we had met at like auditions or like, you know, our first few weeks. And we're like, hey, you guys should come with us too. And then we just started having everyone come up. And that's what really I feel like solidified Fright Fest as like the place to be was like just going to those after. I mean, even still like to this day, every Fright, every Sunday, every Sunday of Fright Fest, we're going out, we go out, we go out. Even if now we don't go out as much as we used to, you know, we'll only right. go up like an hour or two as opposed to like the entire night. Right. But, you know, we'll, we'll – We'll still go out. We'll still say hi, hang out with everybody. Because it's just a big part of Fright Fest is just like the camaraderie. I think that's why we liked it so much. Really, it was just like the culture. It was so sweet. For like, you know, and they were so welcoming to us, you know, our, our first couple years. Right. That's awesome, dude. I mean, now you got me thinking about artichoke dip, but, you know, that's besides the point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, that's cool, man. So what, what year was this one again? Was this, what year was this that you guys first started? 2013. 2013, 2013. man. Wow, 2013. Yeah. And so you guys sound like you have – so how did – so after the first couple of weekends, uh, edging towards the end of this first season, what were your thought processes where you're like, okay, for sure we're coming back next year? Or you're like, this was – you know, maybe maybe not, maybe. Or what was, it, what was your thought process going into looking at next season? Uh, like – because I, I found you know I worked on ways to make it actually sustainable and doable and it's, it's kind of like a quick uh it's like a summer camp or like a you know it's almost like a, a two and a half month long summer camp essentially right. like super physical fun summer camp where you you know your your body gets stronger you, you, your endurance goes up you meet all these amazing people you meet hundreds and hundreds of amazing friends who are all doing it like you know now that now there's a community that you enter so even if you work at one park, you're meeting people from all these other parks and mm -hmm. doing all this cool networking. So we were just absolutely loving it. And it was like, yes, we found something that is more sustainable form of entertainment or can be turned into a more sustainable form of entertainment than, uh, than sports because sports, you know, it's like, there's all these, these, I mean, with the haunt, there still is this risk factor, but with normal sports, there's like this, you know, element of like you could get injured and just get incapacitated at any point and not be able to do it anymore. Your body's eventually going to give out. But with the with the hunt stuff, I was thinking like, dude, you could do this for 30 years if you want. You know, like uh, this is good fun that could be around forever. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I was looking into it. I was like, unique. I want to come back. Yeah, I remember my wheels were spinning as well. I was like thinking like gear like whoa i wonder if i could like improve my gear and i was like watching videos of, like people sliding and like people from not sliding and i was like how are they going so much faster this is before i knew anything right keep right. i knew nothing about sliding i knew nothing about anything i was like how are people making sparks for their toes how are people making those sounds how are they going so fast i can't get that much speed like they're moving around so quickly their gear looks different what are they doing differently than me i remember really start thinking about that and also just the fact of like we should really start conditioning like we really need to start you know, like getting in shape before these events come up. Cause like, that was a lot. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was kind of those thought processes, but I was like, I'm sold. I want to, I want to come back. I was like, that's really cool. Especially after the end of the year, they, they told us, yeah, if you guys want to come back, like, you know, we, we loved you and we definitely have a place for you next year. So we already knew that we were allowed to come back probably to the same spots. So we're like, yeah, that was a blast. I guess we'll see it again, you know? 
like all of our old coworkers on Exile Hill, like our our, our cast up there, they were like, "Yeah, you guys gotta come back." Like, because a lot of them when we when we started have been on Exile for like years and years and years. Right. So we were kind of like just kind of thrown into like this this like family, this like haunt family. Really how, interesting, you know. And then all the friends we made elsewhere as well throughout Fright Fest. How long total were you guys on Exile Hill for? Uh, we were on Exile Hill for five, five seasons. Five seasons. Then, yep. Okay. And then 20, 2017 was our last year there, and then from there we went directly to City Under Siege. So five seasons of Exile Hill, and and when did you guys decide that, uh, or when did you guys uh, come up with Exile Brothers? Like when did that come into fruition for you guys? Oh, go for it, Nate. I feel like this is a lot you. Yeah, this is a, a real silly story. Um, a piece of it, a, a big piece of it had to do because it was right when a lot of characters were making like Instagram accounts. Right. And one of our buddies at Fright Fest was very active on this Fright Fest Instagram account. And I was like, to, to Matt, I was like, hey, I, I want to make an Instagram account because I want to like go and like Josh this guy. I was like, my whole plan was to go on and like basically make fun of him to be like, just always like poking jokes at him being like, oh like what's up like i'm back you know like just kind of being silly like i was like oh it's gonna be so funny because like you know like that's just kind of the relationship we have with this guy like we'd always just be joshing around you know like just having fun and just being silly right um you know because that's like the, the culture like the fright fest culture has always been just like yeah we're just gonna go on and just have a hilarious time like you're just joking around constantly so i was like oh it'd be so much fun to like just go on there because like he's like all like talking to a bunch of people like trying to post stuff like trying to get followers if there was to be like one person come on and be like yo what's up guys you know like so I was like, Matt, we should we should make an Instagram account. And then Matt was like, oh, well, if we do one, we should do one together because, I, you know, it'd be easier to manage than to make our own. And I was like, yeah, you're right. We didn't really have character names either. Like I had thought about a couple things, but didn't really have one. Right. Um, so then we're, we were just like, Matt was like, how about just the exile bros? Let's just go with like we're brothers. Everyone, cause everyone called us the brothers. Right. That's how people would refer to us at Six Flags. That's kind of where the name came from. It was just like, oh, the brothers, the twins, you know, um, the brothers up there on exile it was always like yeah the uh, the guys the, the two brothers on exile yeah it was always that like you know when we when we you hear like our names like oh like the costumes hey can you go grab the uh, the costumes for the two brothers on exile it's always yeah. like you know what i'm saying so we're like oh the exile brothers the exile bros it just makes sense for brothers you know we're like you know cause we used to call ourselves like the wise bros all the time you know it's just like it just kind of was the thing so that kind of became that and then the names themselves like we ended up naming ourselves as well that that came from when we were thinking of names for the Sliders Unite show, the Queen Mary. Okay. So Sliders of the Night, uh, no, sorry, sorry, not Sliders of the Night, Sliders Unite to Hell at the Harbor at Queen Mary. Yeah. Um, we were thinking of names, um, and I thought of this whole backstory for the both of us. I was like, oh, it'd be really cool. Like we should do a combo name. I was like, we should be like, we should be Grim and Reaper. I just don't know who's who. Let's 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 let's, let's discuss names, and then like. I came up with this whole thing being like, oh, Matt, like you could be Reaper because like this, this and this. I'll be Grim because this, this and this. And like, you know, like one of my favorite things is like, you know, like the Grim fairy tales and stuff. Like I just love like the whole like the idea of like, you know, and I'm like and then Reaper, like blah, blah, blah. And Matt was like, yeah, sure. I'm down. Let's let's just let's just pull the trigger on it. So we, <laughs> so kind of we we got those names. Um, but I loved it. I think it was really fun. You know, it works really well. Grim and Reaper. It's kind of silly. But just the Exile Bros is always just kind of like the central name. It was just like, you know, because like everyone knew us together and we kind of moved as one unit, you know. Right. Um, even though we were definitely, we could definitely perform individually. It was always like we, we were at our our best when we were together. So we were like, yeah, we kind of, it's, it was just kind of our identity. Our characters were, were oh, man. And together. You know? I'm so jealous and, and sad that I, I, I missed the Sliders Unite show. Um, I, I don't, cause I was, I think I was like year one of Nights of Horror when that happened, but, um, I, I hear so many stories. I've seen so many videos on it. And like, if, if I was the same person I am today, back then I would have been like jumping the trigger. We're going like, I can't miss that. But it's like, you know, you look back at it. It's like, all right, maybe, maybe, maybe they'll do another one one day. Who knows? You know, you never, I always say never say never, you know, there's always open doors for everything. It's just a matter if you want to kick down the damn door. <laughs> you know, so um, that's cool. So I got to talk a little bit about the uh, the comedy aspect of you guys, because that is something that uh, I that's that's what I was introduced to. That's what I know. Um, but has, was it always comedy or I, I know Exile Hill is a little bit more serious up there, but you, you could, it's haunt. So you could still get away with doing a few things as long as it's in the the, um, the light of the, the theme. 
But um, was it? Were you guys always? Was the comedy always a part of the act, or was that something that you guys picked up later on? Like, or were, how did you guys? What was the attitude going into uh, Exile Hill? This is, this is a hilarious question, Matt. You wanna you wanna start this one? I, I sure. Think a little bit. Okay. Yeah. For me, so for me, it was it was it was an evolution. I was always to this day every single character I portrayed, whether it's the you know the swamp dogs who walk on with you know they have arm stilts, or um, our Exile Brothers characters, or these clowns. Depending on whatever character I played, whatever haunt, I've always had this hundred ten percent energy. Cause that's what I, that's what I look for when I go to a line. I like, Oh man, that person's nonstop. That person, you know, they just, certain people just stand out and you can just tell, you know, their body language just looks like they're just there to, they're just there to do the best entertainment they can. So it kind of evolved for me. We weren't as funny when we were on exile Hill, but the, certainly the energy factor is there. So I do wish you could have seen us to kind of compare and contrast the characters while we were up there. But the energy, the, the movement, the speed at which we walk was very similar, just fast paced, like constant, but it was just more noises, clicking and snarling and, and it, it, much darker. Right. Whereas when we got to City Under Siege and became clowns, you know, we quickly discovered, oh, well, with the ability to talk, um, I mean, we could have spoken on Exile Hill, but, you know, it's a lot more difficult to do a convincing ghostly voice and it just ends up everyone defaults to like either the high pitch haunt voice or the low pitch haunt voice and right. i always don't think it translates very well so we didn't speak personally i just thought you know what i'm not gonna speak while i'm up here when we got to city under siege it was a totally different story and we're like now we have another tool we can we can speak and we can develop jokes so you know i, I made a whole note sheet of tons of relevant popular material and started working on my my kind of my ad-libbing and my impromptu stuff and just trying to be more on the spot and then we started from there getting into utilizing it as a way to entertain large groups of people when we're not scaring because on exile hill you know it's quieter when you're making noise and you're sliding all eyes are on you right and so that's kind of the benefit of being in a quiet scare zone Whereas everyone wants to be in a loud scare zone, but what they don't realize is when you're in a loud scare zone, you might be working and, and performing and putting 110% effort in, and people aren't even realizing you're there because it's so damn loud. Right. And it just kind of, you know, after a while, you're at a theme park for so long, you become desensitized and numb by hearing loud noises throughout the night. So you're not as susceptible to performers doing their thing, and you might miss it, and you don't even... So we had to find ways to entertain large crowds, even though they could see us coming. It was louder. So we had to find things we could do that acting out things physically with our bodies, you know, comebacks, uh, certain like setting up stories and, and doing what we call like little, these little sh bits or, you know, our shtick, just like right. what's our shtick, what's our, what's going to be our, our bit. So coming up with these staples that we do throughout the night, you know, weddings and CPR and, and different things, saving the sea turtles, stuff like that, um, you know, kind of all developed as ways of letting our energy not just be scare, 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 scare this way. It's like, yeah, we might be scaring one person or interacting and doing this bit, but then now we have the ability to form huge crowds of people and we're performing for a larger number of people all at the same time. Right. And, and it's a lot more sustainable. And I think, you know, it works better for, for season haunt um, goers because if you've seen it a million times, you really don't get scared of these things anymore. You're more there for the theming and the interaction. So it's allowing us to interact with dozens of people. You know, we're playing red light, green light with 40 <laughs> people. We're now – interacting with 40 people at the same time right and that's that's huge you know for like that interaction aspect and, and if you like i said if you go to these things all the time that's something that you get with us that you unfortunately never going to get at a place like horror nights or something like that right you have the ability to kind of just like all right, let's interact and yeah. have these weird experiences, and it's fun for us too. That, that's what I love going to haunts for. It's just I love interaction. It's it, 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 that honestly for me makes my time at haunts. I love doing it. Yeah, totally. True that. All right, let's see where where am I even gonna start this? Um, I guess kind of piggybacking up what Matt was just talking about though is like yeah, just just kind of keeping it fresh and changing it up. 
both for like my own sake, you know, to keep me entertained while I'm out there like having fun, but also too, just for people as well. Like, like he said, seasoned haunt goers don't get scared very often. Like, you know, I, 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 I'm not saying I'm like the bravest person in the world. Like I definitely will get jump scared, you know, like in a maze, like I, I get scared in mazes like pretty frequently. Like I go, Oh, you know, like I'll jump a little bit. Right. I don't, I only can tell you like me on like me, I can count on like my, my one hand, how many times I've been scared in the scares on the last like eight years, like nine <laughs> years. Like the last time I got scared in a scare zone, there was one person who scared me last year at knots in, um, in the hollows. Okay. And some guy and I just was, you know, talking. I thought we we're out of the scare zone and I was just like chatting with somebody and then I turned around and then someone just like slid at the perfect time. It was like the first time I got scared by a slider in a long time. It was super cool. Um don't know what his name was, but he looked like a rooster. So if there's a rooster guy out there, like good job, great work. You actually scared <laughs> me. It's hard for me to get scared. And it's not because I'm like brave or anything. It's just you know, it's just like I've been to so many of these, I'm just kinda of desensitized, like, you know, and I, I know what to look for as well. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like kinda of hard to catch me off guard because I'm I'm mostly just going through to see the interactions to see how the people get scared, you know, and just check out the theming character work and just the mazes and stuff, you know, so I, I just enjoy how that's all made. But, um, talking about scare zones and just comedy in general, right? Like let's, let's, let's kind of go back to your question, which was the comedy. No, we were, we were so different on exile Hill. It's so funny. Yeah. I, I wish people who know us now were able to see us perform on exile like one time because it was not Com like like Matt said, it was the energy was definitely still the same level of energy, but it was not comedy at all. You know what I'm saying? Like we did not do anything funny. Like I will admit, I'm guilty of doing this the stupid high pitch haunt voice for one year in 2013. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, this is funny. I see people doing it. It wasn't until after I went to haunts and was like, everyone's doing this. Okay, it's not actually that. Like I don't think it's that funny. Like <laughs> I don't want to say it's not funny because some people don't think it's funny, but I I no longer think it's funny except for certain people right. can pull it off. But I was like, yeah, it's just not funny. Like, I, I don't think I should do that. Like, I don't think I should talk at all. I think I'm just going to yeah, be totally silent. Yeah, if it fits silent. your character. If your character merits yeah. a high pitched right. voice, exactly. that makes sense. But there's no reason why a zombie would just be like, hi. But that's just because you need to find a way to project. And it's a loud environment at a theme park. But I'm going to take that sorry. sound bite, right? And then replace every <laughs> zombie in The Walking Dead with just that. Hi, hey, what you doing? Hi, everybody. It's like, you just gave oh, me all the sound bits. There it is. You're supposed to be scary, but it's a high pitched <laughs> voice. You know, it's like, yeah, it's so overplayed. Like, it's, it's, oh man, like a lot of people do it. Um, and their characters aren't calling for it. And it definitely doesn't work for every, it works for some, not for everybody. And I thought it was funny. And some people did too. But I, after looking at myself, I was like, you know, I just, like, I saw some videos of me doing it. And I just was like, ah, I don't want my character to be that way. I think, I think I'm better suited other ways. So. You know, that's more of my own personal decision for like my own character. So I switch it up. I, I honestly though think Matt and I were like absolute marauders up there. Like we used to be just like, like bloodhounds, man. And like we, him and I were running around like madmen up there. We would never stop moving once. Like I would just be going ballistic because you could hide in the shadows. It was dark. It was scary. You know, it was loud. Every noise you make, every like knee pad hit, every like hand clap, every like if you do a grunt or a yell, which I would do sometimes, but usually I would say my voice, so I wouldn't. Right. would be super super loud you know toe scraping once we once we started wearing you know um slider shoes with steel toe boots you know with like the actual slider shoes not like boots that were just the exposed metal right you know everything was so much louder up there i, I really feel like he and i would do three different things we would do we'd switch between these these three like not bits but these three like bits basically which was the first one was him and i basically just like weaving I remember so many times just like walking down the hill through large groups, just going like boom, 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 just like weaving and being in really good sync. Like I will say Matt and I have a pretty good synchronization when it comes to scaring. Right. Um, the other thing we would do is like sometimes if we were like short staffed that night, we had call outs or like, or if like, we, we used to love being like right in the middle of Exile Hill. It was just the best ground for sliding and it was right. really dark. So it was cool. And it was between two lines as well. So when you have long lines, a lot of people were over there. Um, but when there was other actors, wanting to be there or other sliders who like wanted to be there him and i'd be like oh that's fine like we'll just spread the love so usually one of us like i would see him near like the top of the hill so i would go to the bottom or vice versa i would go like right to the entrance he would go to the one up by uh, willoughby's and we would just kind of scare it up there and just kind of you know and i would know that up there he's doing it i'm down i'm down there doing it and it was kind of hilarious because we looked so similar i would have people literally like, walk past me be like how did that guy get down here so fast what the hell like <laughs> How did that guy get over here? He's been scaring us. I, the whole oh time. man, I just think that's a missed opportunity for something <laughs> of a storyline that could have happened right then and right? there. Right? Is like, like the same reoccurring character? <laughs> 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 and so it was a lot of that. The other thing we would do. So 
The other big thing that bits are really good for at in City Under Siege is that it gives you a break. So it lets you rest your body, rest, like, you know, get catch up with your breathing because you know right. you get, you get kind of tired. The, how we we do that on Exile is that him and I would usually we used to love standing at that big hill that kind of goes down towards like where Superman is. Right. Because it was guns again always really dark up there, especially when the maze used to enter from that side. They used to have a line going down that hill as well. So one of us would stand in the line, like with guests, the other one would stand like in the dark like against the wall. And then he and I would take turns scaring from either side. So we'd pop up, one person would scare, and then like people would be like, oh, looking at that one person. And then the other person would come out of the line, just like reach over the rope and it would scare the crap out of people. And like people in line thought it was hilarious, you know, and like people really liked it. And so that was a good way to like rest our, our energy. Right. While still getting like, I think we definitely got like the, some of the biggest scares were when we, we do that. We do that in a few places around Exile Hill, but like we usually rotate between those three things. And I would, I would, you know, we, but the whole time though, besides when we were kind of resting and trying to do like more resting scares, we, we were moving like the entire time. Like we were just constantly running around, just like walking figure eights around the place. So it was a lot different, not a lot of jokes. I mean, the only time we really do like jokes is when people are like, oh no, stop, don't scare me, don't scare me. Like, and their friends are like egging you on, like, go oh, scare him, scare him. And you're just scaring their friend and like, yeah in that aspect and yes it was still like kind of silly like we're making like jokes and stuff or like you know i would like stand up and like look at their friends and like scare the other friend again and like they're like oh he's getting you so good you know stuff like that was funny or like sometimes i'd be like here like the people in line of like here hold the rope like just pull the rope up whenever you want me to slide and i'll just do it and they go oh, okay and they would just hold the rope up and i would just slide out you know like kind of interact with people <laughs> they would find that very funny but it was never like the jokes it was never the bits that that totally was different that all came when we moved city into siege now I very vividly remember the first night of City Under Siege, the first time we did it in 2018. I I was probably like one of the least scary people in that scare zone because I had no idea what I was doing. I was doing all my Exile Hill tricks, right? And I was just like, this isn't scaring people. I'm hitting my knee pads. It's not scaring people. Like, what the heck? Because it's so loud. I'm wearing a bright costume. People can see me a mile away. And then on top of that, on top of that, it's you know playing like freaking beautiful people marilyn manson just like blasting in the background they have like lasers and lights everywhere yeah, Rob zombie like, everything yeah dude, it's just like bright loud and there's a ton of people just watching and i was like this is so weird this is so much different than exit right. i was like i gotta adjust to this so it took me a took me like a weekend or two to kind of like find a rhythm a little bit and then like my own voice and stuff i was like yes i am gonna be talking now like how am i gonna be talking am i gonna be you know high pitch am i gonna be silly or what i think kind of where i landed that the, the clown voice that I do and like a lot of the jokes I do and make are like bits I come up with people like behind the scenes or um, like, for instance, we like, I, I will always say like, you make some really awesome friends at these events. Um, Cause it's like going to summer camp. I know people who've worked it will agree, but some of like my closest friends I've, I've made from these events. Right. And although a lot of them no longer work at Fright Fest, they either don't work haunts or work at different haunts or have moved out of the state or whatever. Um, you know, a lot of these friends, you grew up, you, I literally grew, grew up with and scaring year after year and getting to know them year after year and like making all these jokes and you're just backstage just joking and joking and doing silly voices. Like I'm always like, oh yeah, like I, I do that. Like what the hell dude? Like, <laughs> like, and that's literally like, literally the clown voice that I do is just like, is just that basically. It's just that, that's literally where all my jokes come from. It's just me and my friends backstage, me and Matt. It's been like, like, uh, yeah guys, like, uh, you have you ever seen my ex-wife around anywhere? Like it's kind of silly, right? Like. And then you That's take a two that count and then right you, there. <laughs> you, you literally you take that and then it's two count anymore. I'm, I'm off. I'm off the podcast. No, um, you're not. I, I, no, 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 not on this <laughs> podcast. You're not. <laughs> but you know, you just take that. And then I would just literally like, like it was just, I, I literally think this, this voice that I would do is something that like me and like my friend Danny uh, would, would joke about. We would just be like, Oh yeah. Like, well, hey guys, how's it going? Uh, my name's like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm uh, blah, 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 you know, kind of just like rambling, like drunk kind of voice just being silly, like not really taking yourself too seriously. Cause he would do that too. Then I would do it. He and I would just go around like acting like we were like, like drunk or whatever. And that's just kind of like where my clown character came from was just coming from that. And then a lot of the bits I would do is just stuff that we would usually talk about behind stage before going out or things like, for instance, like, you know, like I don't even know how the CPR thing started, but I can guarantee you it was like this either Matt or myself was lying on the floor and the other one came up being like, Oh God, everyone step back. Like <laughs> get back. This is a, this is horrible. Like just like just being silly, like just kind of playing off of it. And that's how that bit started. A lot of people thought it was funny, you know? And, uh, and it was like, Oh, we'll do a stage kiss, do a stage, stage kiss into like actually like, like touching lips, which we would do 
I'm not going to lie. Most of the time, the last couple of years, will we touch lips? Yeah, we would. But it's <laughs> hilarious. People think it's so funny. And then people go, oh, my God, Jack should do that. And I go, yeah, don't worry. He's just my brother. It's okay. <laughs> and it's hilarious. You know what I'm saying? But like that, that takes little to no energy to do. And we'll get huge groups watching us all laughing and stuff because that's kind of the fun thing about being certain characters at a haunt. You, you know, you're there to entertain people. Yes, to scare them. But if some people don't want to be scared, the last thing you get you know, is you could just start joking with them, especially if you're that type of character. So that's why I really like clowns in general at haunts is because you could really kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like there's yeah. a place for like killer clowns. I think killer clowns are fun too, but you can really do a lot of unique stuff with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, I think, you know, Six Flags is a great example of that. Uh, uh, Carnival is a really fun example of that as well. Like I, I think that like, as far as like the city under siege clowns go, like we have like the best like bits and stuff, but I will say for the, the, the scary farm clowns, like some of those people I, I've gone through carnival a couple times and I've seen some of the, like the most unique scaring I've ever seen, like my entire life, like people on tri I, I unicycles, people with like that guy that used to have the balloons, he would like yeah. make balloon animals and like shoot them at people. I've seen some like uh, the most in like the, the contortionist they had last year. I've seen some of like the most unique scaring styles i've ever seen my whole life at carnival which is so fun that that's kind of like their take of like the weird clown stuff and then you look over at fright fest our take of like the weird clown stuff is like us breaking the fourth wall and just being like you know like cpr and doing and doing big and doing big bits yeah exactly just doing big bits and just kind of like having fun and just being silly you know so it's kind of fun you can really do a lot with it so i think the comedy just comes like i said just from like just joking around and just kind of carrying that over because we're doing that kind of stuff behind stage and then we just go out and do it like yeah. I really, one of the funniest stories, like the best way I can describe this is there was one night we were about to go out for Unleashed. We're lined up at the gate. We have like, I'm not joking you, one minute until we go out. I'm just doing one last stretch. I'm like limbering up. I'm touching my toes and Tweak rocks up. He's like, oh, hey dude, check it out. Check out your new hairdo. And he like, he puts his, his finger, his glove underneath my wig and popped it up. And like it ripped out the wig clips. and like, it, like it's glued to my forehead. So like kind right. of, hurt. I was like, oh, what the hell? I was like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, oh, what? I'm sorry. Like just being a dumbass. And I was just like, okay. Like, like I had to like sprint over to like one of the makeup artists who was luckily standing there. So she could like quickly like readjust it for me real fast. Right. And then my wig was all loose after that. But you know, we're just like joshing around. We're just having a fun time back there. Yeah. And I was like, you're such an idiot, you know? And so like literally I was like punching him as the gates were opening. I remember like being like, like you freaking like idiot. Like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, uh -huh. like you know. <laughs> and then we're just carrying that energy out there, you know, and then all night, yeah. We're just making jokes about that and he's like you know it's just like kind of that energy it's just that fun you know i don't really think it's anything different like we're not doing anything different than we're already doing when we're backstage we're just kind of like carrying that energy mixing it in of course with scares you know what i'm saying right. you're doing scares but you're just carrying that same like excited energy the whole night while also scaring and then when you get tired or if you can't scare somebody like they're just they're just not gonna get scared by you then you just you just resort to joking yeah you know 100%. i always try scaring first but like for instance one thing I know Matt does this too. One thing he and I have, have like, it's been like our creed the last couple of years is like we target men and we target like big dudes or like dads, people who don't look like they're very scared. We try to go for the people who are like, okay, you probably haven't scared all night. You know, like you see all these videos online of people, like people walking and with their significant other and like one person's being scared, but there's like those two or three like men and women in the group who are just like, like, I'm not even, this is not scary to me. Like I'm just, yeah. you know, either like they're too tough or they're just not scared by whatever's going on. I try to go for those people because I know they're also paying to have fun and be interacted with and be scared. You know what I'm right. saying? And some people are like, oh, yeah, I love scaring like people's girlfriends or like kids, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, dude, I'm going for like the tallest person I can find and I'm going to try to scare that person. Because <laughs> if you can scare them, it's super cool. But if you can't, that's fine too. Like that, that's another huge part of where the ex-wife thing came up from. And like some of like the sayings I have is because I would run up to these, these, these people, these families. I would scare – generally, I would scare – like the teenager and the mom of the group, the dad would just be standing there. So I'd be like, hey, do you guys want me to scare him? I'll scare him right now. And so the family, of course, would be like, yeah, scare him, scare him, scare him. He's like, you're not going to scare me. Like, he's like just too tough for it, right? Like, he's not having fun. And I'd be like, I say, I love you on the first date or like my ex-wife. And then they just start laughing. You know what I'm saying? And then like they're yeah. having a good, and then all of a sudden, like their whole family's having a good time. I'm having a good time. It's just like a win-win for everybody. Like they're, they're just like, it's silly. Like a stupid six foot one guy with a blue wig and a blue costume is walking up talking about a stupid ex-wife or like whatever you know what i'm saying or like talking about saying he loves you on the first date and like silly stuff that like is just so out of pocket where it's just like 
they weren't expecting it. Right. They're expecting us to be like all tough. Like, oh no, I'm gonna scare you. I'm too cool for this place. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm just like, I'm just breaking the fourth wall, having fun. And it's it's fun, you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of where like a lot of these bits and like sayings and stuff came from. I think it just kind of comes from that that energy. A hundred percent, man. Yeah. I need so, I, now I need up? a multiversal crossover <laughs> with Carnival and and City Under Siege. Like Doctor Strange, open up the portals, <laughs> get it going. Man, just to, yeah, I mean, it's it's true though. I mean, I, I do see, you know, you're talking about scare styles and whatnot. You, you didn't make a good point, and it really opened my eyes to it right now was, you know, they are unique for, for their different characters and, and the way they scare over there, but you guys are unique mm -hmm. for breaking that fourth wall and, and, and kind of just keeping like the, the show kids. going. Yeah. yeah, I love it. And, you know, going into, you know, going into my first year of this, you know, I had heard so many stories about you guys and, and whatnot, and... I was like, man, I, I can't wait to see how these guys are, man. Like, I'm excited. Like, I really am. And and we got there, and I just was, oh, oh God. Rob and I just were dying on the floor, <laughs> cracking up in tears, just sitting there <laughs> watching you guys do your thing. And I, I am fortunate enough to capture a lot of those moments on camera because there was just so many – I mean, I could I could be there all season, and I bet I, I I'd get something new every single night, probably. You know, it's it's just it's it was that. And every time we went back, we there was something new, to, something added to the table, something I got to talk about, something we did together. As as uh, what was funny mm -hmm. as uh, after the first time I went, I was like, I gotta go back, I gotta go yeah. try things, and and I had a bright idea because I think it was around. Yeah, it was it was during football season, so I remember going over to my going over to my mom's house, and and she'd always watch football on Sundays. You know, I'd go over there during the day, and then go to the haunt at night and stuff. And I was like, I, I was watching the referees and specifically, and I was like, let me see how much penalty flags are on Amazon. And <laughs> so I go on Amazon and I see it. I'm like, oh, okay, I hit buy, and I immediately send these guys a message. I'm like, hey, so listen. I was watching football today, and it got me to thinking, you guys are kind of looking like with the stripes like referees. I was like, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring penalty flags, and I'm, you, we'll just go from there and see what happens. We, there was that, uh, that was the only thing planned was I was bringing the flags. I was going to give them yeah. to you, and, I, and the rest was you guys. I, I, can't, even take, I, I can't even take credit for that because that is you guys 100%. I just, I just supported the flags. And the end result, uh, I have to say, was one of the funniest and I would say easily say the funnest nights I've had at Haunt recording that. I mean, the, <laughs> the penalty calls were so outrageous and, and, I, and, I, and just the confusion on people's faces was, I think, the highlight of the night for me. But some of the calls we got were just – there was actual football calls and then there was just stuff they made up on the spot that I was just like – hilarious i think matt you were in the video you have the the most oh, you, you were calling like seven penalties <laughs> and, and and if you really listen to the, i even like i even like write them in subtitles so people can understand <laughs> what he was saying but if you listen to the penalties i'm just sitting there like did he just call a penalty for not being able to touch the lasers I was like, that is the most genius idea I've ever heard. And and these kids were just, they didn't know how to react. And and you guys pulled that off. Uh, what was, uh, now Now that I kind of want to hear behind the scenes of it, even though we were the ones that kind of orchestrated it, what was it going into when I, when I, I remember I met with you, Nate, a little bit prior to the yeah. event. Um, did, did you kind of, did you have any ideas of, of what you were going to do that night? Or you just were like, you know what, I'm going to make the most out of this and whatever comes out of it, comes out of it. Um, to be honest, I had zero things planned. Like I knew we were doing it. And then I, I knew we had the flags. I put them in my, my haunt box. We did the opening. Um, and I forgot about them because like, we're, you know, I put my haunt box down at one spot. I had to like run across the backstage area to go do the opening. Yeah. By the time I'm back from my first break, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. We have these. So I open up the box, you know, and Matt, Matt's like, oh, dude, we got to grab the flags because he's coming later, but also we should start like messing around with them. I was like, that's right. Cause like, you know, we were on our first break. We grabbed them. I was like, I, I had zero things prepared. I was just like, okay, like, what are some football penalties? I was like, ah, you know what? I'm just going to like see how it goes. I'm just going to like make things up. <laughs> so that was just literally all improving, like for that me, basically. Great. You know, and the, the thing is, it's kind of funny too. A lot of the stuff I do, all the bits, whether it be the flags or the jokes and stuff, I always feel like there's always three audiences I'm doing this for. I'm doing it for myself, right? So <laughs> yep. if I think it's funny, I'll probably do it. I'm doing it uh, like the jokes I'll either do for myself. I will do. Or like the people, whether that be the guests or just other 
actors. Like sometimes I'll be making jokes just for like Matt or just for Blaze or just for people <laughs> because sometimes people think that's really funny, but also sometimes it's just like fun for all of us, but also for the guests as well. And also for the people watching. We always have a lot of people watching us yeah. in City and Siege. We have tons of people just sitting there watching for hours. And I know they're just sitting there having a good time. So I'm always making jokes. Even if the people I'm saying it to don't think it's funny, someone is getting entertained by it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when it comes to the flags, like thinking about it, if I was walking through a scare zone and I got like lightly tapped by a, a football flag and had some stupid looking <laughs> six foot tall clown walk up to me, and being like offsides for whatever like i think i called so I, I called someone i was like i was like foul uh your arms are too big you're working out too much or i was like foul sir you're too handsome i'm gonna have to take you with me and like grab this guy and like took him away from like his wife like stuff like that like you know what i'm saying if that happened to me while i was walking around i'd be like this is like so or silly. who I love this. who was it you that know? when we went up the girl thought it was a yellow ghost do you remember that oh, one? Yeah, I, think, I, I do. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that is that a yellow ghost? It's like, it's so hard to like, that's why I was accidentally throwing way too many penalties. Cause like <laughs> I, I, I kept forgetting that every time you toss a flag in the air, it's, it's a new penalty, but I'm trying to relay the message that like, I'm obviously an inmate, but if you look at it from a different light, I have a whistle and a penalty flag. I'm a referee, <laughs> and I'm going to issue you issue you a penalty. But you're also trying to explain it through the mask. <laughs> yeah, that was that was something they had to do this year. They had to wear uh, for because of because of the pandemic. Some nights they made you guys wear uh, the mask. And uh, either yeah. way, I found a way to get that audio clear as I could. <laughs> you did a good job because that was that was tough. We were like shouting through these plastic masks trying yeah. to get it out. <laughs> And it was like trying to explain that. <laughs> I felt so defeated. Is that a yellow ghost? Like, you know what? It, 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 at this point, it's what you want it to be. That's going to be a penalty for saying that. Yeah, if you want it, that's a yellow ghost. Because it's just like, I can't, I'm shouting. I'm shouting and I have a whistle. I'm, I'm trying to be a ref, but it was, dude, it was it was actually really difficult. I want I want everyone after watching the after you guys watch this show to go on my Instagram right after this and go find that video because I guarantee you you'll laugh your ass off. I guarantee yeah. it. We even we <laughs> even like, got pops to make a cameo. That was great. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, and I think there. the funny thing is too, like I bef before this meme even became popular, like I wanted people to come into the scare zone. I was like, my whole goal is like, I want people to come in here uh, with like, I never want them to know our next move. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And not in a scary way all the time. Sometimes in a scary way, yes, but sometimes in just a super weird way. I, every time you come into this the zone, I wanted you to be able to like, be like, okay, the first time I came in here, that guy scared me. Right. Second time I came in here, I saw him like scaring someone else. But the third time I walked through, he was just sitting there like crawling around with like two other guys behind him, like, throwing flags at him or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, doing something weird like oh that guy was like that pink clown literally just shoved that blue clown into the the window of the cop car <laughs> which we would do sometimes <laughs> stuff like that i wanted people to be like what the hell is going on because that's kind of the whole point you know what i'm saying like we're we're, we're crazy you know we're, we're silly we've lost our minds we're i feel just, like you're going you're kinda... going to uh explain maybe uh how to chew five gum Exactly. Yeah, that's, a five gum. that's a good series. That was such a good video when I saw that thing. I was like, oh, I miss these commercials so much, and they made it so funny with yeah. the three of them. In fact, I'm not sure if you knew this, Anthony, but if you go onto our Exile Bros account, I actually have. I'm just gonna check to make sure it's still there. Yeah, if you go onto our Exile Bros account under our stories, I do have a five gum series. So Matt edited all those videos. I uh, put them all together. So there's a couple on there. If anyone wants to see those, just go to XF I'm underscore XL. Definitely, because... I'm definitely watching it. I am. 100%. I'm going to actually watch it again tonight. That's I am going to, before I go to bed, I am going to lay in bed, and I am going to laugh my ass off, and it will be great. But, uh, oh, my God. We'll like some more. Those bits like those right there, like, those are, you know, like, I look at those, I'm like, this is fucking genius, bro. Why isn't everyone doing this, man? Oh, because they're not Nate and Matt and, and, and freaking Green Clown, man. They... They they're they're on a whole nother level of, of doing things like that and, and I you just you can't even get mad. You just gotta respect it you know? and just laugh at it. Thank, Thank you. you. I, it's it's just to think and think about it this way too. Like just okay, put put yourself in our shoes for a second. Like I, I will show up, it'll be Sunday. I show up to Six Flags and I'm like, Oh, I'm so tired and, and Blaze, right? He was he was staying with, with Emma and I, um like he was like crashing our place on the weekends. Right. 
he was like staying with us on the weekends, you know? And so I've literally been talking to this guy all weekend long. And then just to see blaze open up his case and pull out something or like to see Matt be like, Hey, like I brought these from home and just to see him pull out something. This is what it is behind the scenes. I'm just sitting there watching her. I would do the same thing sometimes too. Like, Hey, look, I went to the store. I bought this thing. It's an electronic whistle or like whatever. Like just seeing people pulling out random <laughs> random items, being like, "Hey, I'm gonna bring this out there tonight and like do something with it." Oh, I'm just like, it's hilarious because you uh, never know what's gonna happen. It's like you every were... single night somebody's pulling something out of their haunt box. I'm like, "Where'd you get that from?" Like Blaze, you've been staying at my apartment the last three days, and I have not seen this. <laughs> he's like, "Oh yeah, I was keeping it a secret. It's really funny stuff like that." Where I'm just like, "Dude, this is so so hilarious." Like. You know what I'm saying? I, and then you just I, go out there and you just do it. You just I have to it. give you props of with the whistles because I think that is one of the most genius and simplest scare tactics to use. Like, and it saves your voice. I remember we were talking about this. Um, I, I remember when I was I scare acted for a night at a, at a home haunt last season, and I immediately was like, whatever character I am, I don't care. I'm gonna incorporate it. I gotta use a whistle. I was like, that was the most coolest and genius scare tactic ever. And I, I, I like to say I Frankensteined who I played that night of, of a bunch of different people that I drew inspiration from. And you, you two were one of them because of the whistle and, and the way. And, and towards the end of the night, when I, when I was just – all I was doing was yelling random things. I was like, these guys were such an influence on me this year. I got I to gotta do something <laughs> like that. And so long story short, I played a, a dino warrior from the year 3000. That was my character. I was a dinosaur <laughs> – and it was the the whole theming of the thing was supposed to be like really cheesy sci-fi horror B films, and it was all originals that these guys created. And I was a Dino Warrior from the year three thousand. And uh, you know, you think I would do like roars and stuff, but I I was at the end of the night we were just so tired. I was just yelling at guests random things, and uh, one of the things I yelled out with with my whistle was uh, I, I whistled, and then I yelled out Jurassic Park was real the whole time. <laughs> and guests were just confused. I would yell out like pancakes are better than waffles or, you yeah. know, and all this, like I just, just to start all this, this random things. It was just, it, it was out of yeah. control, but it was hilarious. In my universe, <laughs> Jurassic Park takes place, but with my ex-wife for all the T-Rex scenes. Three. <laughs> In my universe, this, the same movie happened. Um, I do, I'm not going to lie. Both the whistle and the, the shaker bottle belts um, were Matt's idea. Both of those, those, those were all him. Right. Those, he start. He started the both of those. Thanks, Nate. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. I just was like, oh, I love that. That's great. Most of that for me was because I, like I said, I needed to make sound. I needed to be louder. Yes. Yeah. And yelling just wasn't doing it for me. Yeah. And you can only slide so much. The knee pad clap didn't really work as much as it used to because it's just too loud in that scare zone. So I needed to find a new noisemaker. Yep. Uh, and then Matt started bringing a whistle around. And I said, that's so clever. That's so good it'll save your voice and it's loud and you can control the the um like the pitch and how loud it is like it's really good it's a really versatile scare uh for any any character that needs a good noisemaker a simple whistle is so effective um and yeah so that, that's kind of that he, he did the shaker bottles as well just so we can make lots of sound as we're moving around that's basically what those are for every right. time you take a step you're just like ching 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 and then all <laughs> the other props he and i would bring were just like fun little things that we just wanted to mess around with, like for instance, my air cannon that I'd bring around sometimes. That was just something I've always wanted to use to scare with. I just never had the character to do it because I had right. been on Exile Hill, right? Yeah. So in 2019, I was like, oh, it'd be really fun if I had like this. It would save my voice, and that's how I pitched it too, right? You have, to, you have to get everything you bring approved. Right. So I, I was just like, I have an air cannon. I, it doesn't hurt. Obviously, you know how this works. Really simple device, but also it'll save my voice and it will save me from sliding as much so I can rest my body for the show later tonight. Right. And so they were like, they were like, yeah, it's a great idea. You know, as long as you're saving your energy for the show, like that's awesome. Like go for it. You know, stuff like that. Like just don't hit anybody with it, you know, yeah. in the face, like, you know, stuff like that. And so that, or like this last year, I, I don't know if you ever saw my cowbell. Oh, I brought around. I, I made continuous SNL jokes <laughs> about it. <laughs> the cowbell, same thing. I just, I'm just trying to find new props just to have fun with like, just so I don't have to be sliding or doing the same scare tactics over and over again, mostly for myself, just to have fun. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm out there. I'm out there to have fun, have a good time, right. while also doing a job. So, you know, if it, if it works and it's silly and you can make jokes about it and you can scare with it, like, it's great. You know, like, just switch 100%. it up. Keep it fresh. Yeah, man. Uh, 
You know, some of my most memorable moments with you guys this year, um, Matt, uh, with you was uh, you and you and Nate both killed it. But I remember early on when we were doing the the, the penalty flags, you you were the the one out there in the beginning, uh, starting it off and everything, and, and Nate was coming in and out and, and stuff. But I mean, Matt, with you, it was just just some of the funniest penalties that I can ever hear, and and I I think to this day that was one of the the best things we ever did together. That was a hundred percent. I knew that was going to be great from the start. I, I knew it. Um, yeah, that was that was a great time. So, th- those are my most fondest memories of Matt. With Nate, I mean, it, it, it's one of those things where, I, and I still have the footage, and we still laugh about it today, me and Rob. Um, it, 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 some of the most outrageous things I'd never seen happen, like you slid in front of a wagon, and were screaming bloody murder like if you were about to get ran over by this wagon and this family was yelling at you you were yelling back at the family i don't think i've ever heard rob laugh so hard uh so that was one that was one highlight and another highlight i love from you that i caught was you having getting pushed in a stroller (laughs) i i looked at that i'm like he's getting pushed in a stroller that is, you can't even, oh that, my you got to respect it. Like, that's the most gangster move I've ever seen ever. <laughs> a lot of this stuff uh, will always, a, a lot of times, too, if there's someone there to see it, to watch, or especially when people are filming, too. If I ever have, like, an idea for something, I'm like, oh, this would be really funny, but, like, I'll probably be able to do it one time, and then if I get away with it, cool, but I'll probably get told not to do it again. So I want to make sure someone's there to, like, see it. So I don't have right. to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to make sure someone's going to see it to like, get, like, entertainment out of it or, like, to film it. So that stroller was just perfect. Like, the kid was on the ride. The kid was <laughs> doing his ride, having fun. The mom was just standing there, like, getting just bothered by clowns. So I was like, here, mom. Like, I started calling her mom. And it was like, here, push me around. And, of course, she was like, okay, baby, I got you. Like, like no problem. Like, she was just, like, in <laughs> on it, just, like, started pushing me around. So yeah, there there I was just on this like stroller, and I'm just grateful that stroller was able to the main support me <laughs> more than anything. But I was I was like I was like, hey, push me over there, push me over there. Cause, like you were, you guys were sitting over there, I'm like, here's gonna be hilarious. Hey, push me over there, would you? She's like, oh yeah, sure, just just push You're me like, wherever I want to go. Going to school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for you guys, everyone else that I, we passed like so many, I passed probably a couple hundred people doing that. That bit, and everyone was just like, "Oh, it's just so funny," you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's the thing. Dude. Never, never let them know your next move. Imagine going to a haunt for your first time, and being like, "Oh, I heard these clowns are scary," and then you just walk through and you see that. Like, I would, lo- I would lose it. I'd be like, "Oh my god, that's so funny!" Like, I was not, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is not what I was expecting from this event. That's why I love so much about that scare zone, dude. And then I got, and then I, obviously I got a moment that that involved both of you that was hilarious, and that was the. Uh, when you cornered, uh, and I have this on camera, it's one of my favorite clips. When you cornered like three kids in something, and you did the clown tunnel, and <laughs> you were promising so hard not to scare them, and you guys did it regardless, and it was the funniest thing. This kid, this kid was like traumatized, and I was just laughing so hard. Um, you guys, I, I kid you not, I don't th- like I said, I don't, I've never seen that much energy and, and that much commitment that you put into these characters than, than you guys do. And as going for my first time, I, I, that's why I wanted to go back. It was just, it was great. And I, I just genuinely had fun. And I even said, and, and this is the ongoing question I get asked all the time on this channel is when are you going to go scare at a haunt? I was like, the only way I'm scaring at a haunt is if I get to scare with these two guys right here. Oh, that's the only man. way I get to scare. That's the only way I'm scaring at any haunt. And they get first dibs as to where I go. I go where they're going to go. If I, if I ever made the decision to do it, I would drive out to Six Flags every night just to go scare with you guys. That's how that's how much fun I had, and that's how much fun I knew, <laughs> know I would have if I were to scare with you guys. Wow, thank, thank you. Thank that's you, a huge man. compliment. That, that is a huge never, praise. It would be a blast, um, man. It, that it, would be it, really fun. It would be fun. Would be I, 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 I don't feel like... I don't think, you know, I don't think, you know, I think the stars will align one day. I have, I never say never, right? You never yeah, know never when never. the right opportunity might arise, and I'm going to be like, there's my cue. So, <laughs> Absolutely. No, you guys honestly are some of the funniest and some of the sweetest and nicest people I've ever met um, immediately. And I, and I tell this story off camera all the time. Um, the first time I went, you guys, you, 
you didn't even know me. You know, I walked in. You guys probably watched. You maybe watched a couple videos or so, but we've never met in person. That was the first time we all met in person, and I was welcomed with such open arms at that event. Um, between you two, everyone that we that we walked around and, and started knowing us after we went, I was welcomed with such open arms, and and I will never forget that. That that was easily the reason why I was like, this is. This is fun. I like this. This this really. I was genuinely having a good time, and 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 just to see you guys setting us up with good spots for the slider show, which was phenomenal. Which we're going to talk about in a sec, because God, I love that show. Um, but just just everything you guys done did, did for us that entire season. Uh, I I always talk about like they, these guys welcome us with open arms more than anyone, and I'll never forget that. So to you two, I thank you for that. Right back at you. Thank you for the, the content. And, you know, it's like a no brainer really to be like that with, with uh, guests. But, you know, it, it, it's even easier to be like that with somebody who, who's coming to, you know, produce content about, about what we do because it just means that, you know, we get to reach so many more people entertaining. And um, that's kind of our whole goal. And then, you know, on top of that, like, um, just, I don't understand, like, when haunt, um, pe- like, with, like people in like your situation where you're vlogging and you're filming content and putting content out there, uh, essentially for free. All we have to do is do our job, and you, you know, you're making great videos and editing and putting all these hours of work into things. I don't understand when you go to certain haunts, you know, why people wouldn't be like that with you. You know, to right. me, it's a no-brainer. It's like, it's like. Don't you want to be able to see yourself on camera? Don't yeah. you want to like have that, be able to reach, you know, a broader audience and kind of be able to show your friends and family, like, look what I do, you know, for fun or for a living or whatever it is. And so, you know, I don't get that. Like, you go to so many events and it's like, you know, even we get that too, or, or you know, I see that, uh, you know, other updaters getting that treatment when they go to certain events. It's like, not none in specific, but just it just happens where monsters just they scare and they run or it's like whatever it's like dude if you see a camera go up and interact like that's part of the fun you yeah, know 100 like, percent. that's capturing those moments is hilarious i don't know why they don't just bring you over right away but teach their own i guess beastie clowns yeah. you know that's all i gotta <laughs> say <laughs> for those who know no i i call these guys the beastie boys of haunt right here man like they have that energy <laughs> that the beastie boys did when they started man it was it was great yeah yeah. That was fun. So thank, thank you for the compliments, though. Seriously, man, it means a lot. And, uh, you, know, you guys have always been so solid, too. You know, like, like Matt was saying, making free content for us. All the content creators out there that have come to Fright Festival, like, film us and stuff, and have said, like, such nice things about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Um, you know, like, we're not specifically doing this for the videos. You know, we're just trying to have a good time. But it's just like, you know, this is – even when the camera's not on us, like, this is – it's just it's just entertainment that we're trying to give people in general, you know. And so it's nice to be recognized for that. Cause I'm not, I'm not doing this for the videos or for the clout, you know, I'm literally doing this for like, I mean, yeah, the money is cool, but just for like the fun, you know, it's like a hobby. I, I really enjoy doing it. I love mm-hmm. portraying these characters. And then now more so than that, both Matt and I both have like jobs and we're trying to make careers for ourselves by doing like live events and putting on stuff like this, you know, it's all about right. entertainment and just people having a fun time, you know, like that, that's why I do it, you know, it's just for the people out there to have a fun time. I want them to be able to have a good time doing this, you know, and have a fun exactly. time while being there. Yeah. So, you no, know what I'm saying? But yeah, thank thank you for coming and, and yeah, filming us and you. saying such nice things. It's super cool. Yeah. Man. No, and, and you guys continue. We, we still chat every now and then. Nate, I just, like I said, I just saw you a few months ago. Yeah. And uh, we were, we were, it was like no time had passed. You know, we just, we yeah. caught right back up and, and everything. Um, and, and I getting to talk to Matt over Instagram and stuff. Again, like uh, when I, when I, shout out the idea like hey i know we've been talking about doing this for for some time now um and, and the fact that we're finally doing it, 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 it this whole show i've been a fanboy honestly it's it's been kind of one of those <laughs> things where i'm like i can't believe i'm doing this right now this is cool you know a lot of people fanboy over celebrities and everything and all that and that's cool but i was like i don't know these hot monsters are my celebrities man like these guys <laughs> They go out there and they give it 110 percent every night, and you just can't top that. Like, and they do it for like a good solid month and a half straight, you know. So, <laughs> it's 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 it the respect, and then the, and that's why I love doing these shows because there's so many stories and voices that that need to be heard out there of 
different experiences, different point of views and, 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 and how they felt going into things and stuff. And, you know, I just want to give anyone who wants to try this for the future uh, an opportunity to hear various stories of how other people went through, you know, first time auditions or, or, you know, working their way up to where they are now. So it's a good, it's a good, I, you know, it's, it's all entertainment. It's all fun. We have a lot of funny stories, but also it's, I, I also think it's very educational for anyone who, who's looking to get into this, to this, to this realm of, of haunt and, and, and really want to go out there and showcase, but just don't know how to start. So hopefully anyone that watches who, who's going through that can uh, maybe benefit from this and, and get some ideas, tips and tricks and Frankenstein and make them your own. So, yeah. And that's exactly what awesome. it is too. You awesome. know, I always say for people getting into this is don't, don't copy us. You know, that's why I'm always trying to tell people like, you don't have to be us, you know, like that's kind of the whole, the fun part of a is that some people have different personalities and it's so different, you know, and that's like, it's good. It's good that Carnival and Santa Seas are different. It's good that like Horror Nights, Fright Fest and Knots all have really different feels to them. It's a good thing, you know, like you shouldn't, and it's kind of hard. That's why it also makes it kind of hard to compare them to each other as well. It's because mm -hmm. like, if they were too right. similar, it would just get boring. You would get, you would get tired of it. So, you know what I'm saying? Like have fun with it. Like be your, be your own character. Like, and like you said, Frankenstein it together. Like I, if you take some of my jokes, if I see someone taking one of my jokes and it's on video, like, I'm going to laugh so hard. Like it's going to be so funny. I do not care if anyone takes my jokes or some of my bits, you know what I'm saying? Like you go for it. It's, it's hilarious. I think it's so funny. You know what I'm saying? just make it your own thing, you know, have fun with it. Like, you know, like, uh, I, I don't want anybody to be me mostly because I just want people to like explore their indiv individuality because I think that's that's where you get these truly unique monsters and truly unique experiences at these events. You know, I think I let an ex-wife joke slip at work one time. Oh, and, that's hilarious! And it, and it worked <laughs> out like the it, like luckily everyone that I was talking to I'm like cool with, but I was like someone said something like that was like outrageous and funny and i was like yeah much like my ex-wife you know and they just all started cracking up on that i was like i can't even it's, take credit for that joke it's hilarious every time i hear someone say anything about ex-wife or just the term big dog in general like yeah. if, if i know they they heard that from me first and if i hear someone say like oh what's up big dog like to me or just like to someone else like i've heard i've heard at my place of work i i make ex-wife jokes constantly at my place of work currently and i've had i've overheard people to other people say something about their ex-wife like haha oh my gosh it's so funny before i even i'm like around the corner and i'm hearing this and i'm like oh my god this is hilarious you know saying like, it makes me <laughs> laugh i'm like i can't believe i had that much of an influence like people like this bit so much like they're taking it now like you know like having people call you the big dogs and stuff it's like so funny and yeah. i'm just doing that just to have fun and just to be silly you know what i'm saying so it's like and it's it's totally fine it's totally fine to like you know to like kind of like see things you like and don't like and then make them your own you know do them do them kind of in your own way it's just like right that's that's kind of you know it makes these events so like more fun in my opinion yeah so yeah if, if you're out there at a haunt and i walk through and you make an x5 joke to me or some kind of joke to me that's like related to something i've done in the past i'm going to laugh so hard like it's going to be the funniest thing i've ever heard that would be the biggest accomplishment of my haunt career <laughs> right there i just made the exile brothers laugh i, I, I i'm done for the rest of the night <laughs> you know? And you'll, you'll know if, if we're coming through, like we usually post when we're going to these events um, and our, everyone we know, like we try to tell as many of our friends that work these events as possible that we're coming through and yeah. we're, we are just so loud and rowdy. Like you will not be able to miss us. Like we're going to be so ridiculously belligerently loud. Like we're going to try to hype you up. We, we, we just think that's so much fun. You know, like I know I like almost no longer go to these events to be scared because it's like, it is fairly hard <laughs> to scare me, but I go to these events literally like with Matt and, eight other people and we're all wearing shirts for like one person. Like we literally like bought all these white t-shirts and <laughs> sharpied on somebody's name, walked through the haunt, found them after they saw them. We just threw the shirt. We don't need them anymore. We just threw the shirts away. Like, yeah, we don't need it anymore. <laughs> that, that, the commitment the though, bit. bro, to buy it eight literally... t-shirts and to draw on something <laughs> just for one person to get a photo and then throw the shirt away. <laughs> that commitment. <laughs> It doesn't get any like, better I, than I don't that. Hold these anymore. We just toss them afterwards. But it was so funny just walking up, being like, "Hey, look, dude! Like, check it out. Look what's on my shirt." You know, like <laughs> this silly stuff. Like, you know, we're gonna go. We go around hyping people up and stuff. We we try to do it in a very respectful way as well. We're not trying to get in anyone's way. Right. Like, everyone's out there. We understand how hard it is. Like, this job can be sometimes. But it's just like, yeah, just just you know, it's like this whole thing, this whole event, and, and the haunts in general, and this whole idea of Halloween events. You should just be having fun and having fun with your friends and just having a good time. And that's. <laughs> When we 100%. go to these events, I'm just like, yeah, I probably won't be scared if I do. Cool, but that's not why I'm going. I'm going just to like, I'm going to do so time. many bits. Yeah. And we're going to hype. We're going to hype these people up. Like, I'm going to be so loud. 
you know, try to try oh, to man. encourage him, be like, yeah, woo, you know. Oh, that's hilarious. I love I love to hear it, man. That's exactly how I am the same way. I like to just I like to go sit and watch my friends and just hype them up and talk with them, see how their nights are going and stuff and all that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, you know, speaking of I, I have to bring this one up, too, because this was so well put together. Um, this is something that, you know, you I know you guys had a hand into a lot and, and everything. But the uh, the slider show at, at Six Flags. Uh, easy. I, I have not now prior to going to this event and I had went to Dark Harbor in 2019. I don't think I just saw it because I was new to that mm-hmm. event, too, in 2019. But prior to that, I hadn't seen a slider show since like 2000, early 2000s of knots. Yep. Um, and it was so cool to finally see a slider show again that was really well choreographed and the music was there. Everyone had a role in it. And, and to see that all put together. So. Talk to me, and it doesn't have to be this specific one, but talk to me about what it's like having to put that together, having to get everyone on the same page, and and to have to, to choose music and, and really choreograph. What's what's the process like to do that, and then what it's like on the on the actual day of of, of show in front of the, an audience? Certainly, certainly. Uh, well, strap in. This is a bit of a, a detailed explanation. Yeah, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Well. Um, for starters, I mean, we, and if you are going to attempt to do this at your prospective haunt, um, it's very likely that this will be the first of its kind or, you know, a show that essentially you're going to have to get off the ground uh, and you're going to have to pitch it. So we spent, you know, years kind of sowing the seeds of this show to be able to come to fruition, way, you know, far before the show actually happened. Right. Um, and the thing that actually finally got us to be able to get this approval was inviting our our senior leadership out to watch the sliders unite show that we were participating in representing six flags at the queen mary right in 2017 so once that happened then and, and still our show didn't get off the ground until 2019 but there's there's so much that goes into it so what a lot of people don't realize is aside from pitching the show and coming up with the concepts of the show and, you know, working on it. There's also the sense that, you know, a lot of it has to be self put on the parks, the way that these large theme parks hire people and, and just develop their teams for these events is, you know, essentially they're going to be hiring 500 to 2000 people right. for a seasonal event. And they have very, you know, they have all these state laws they have to jump through and federal laws. And there's a training process for the corporate company companies either cedar fair or six flags or universal so um the corporate side of things has these very strict rules so you can't just be like yeah you know it's may let's go out there let's get hired let's get paid and let's and let's go and and we'll we'll just get out there and start practicing you really can't do that so you know a lot of it had to be coordinated ahead of time you know and we got with a lot of the sliders um including blaze was the biggest you know that the three of us constantly were working on this but also from its conception you know we were working with tricks we were working with jinx and we were working with a lot of different people and and it all kind of spitballing ideas and talking about our visions for things and then essentially uh just since we kind of had a little bit of seniority around there nathan and i were as far as just consistent sliding goes for the park they said, okay, why don't you, you know, come in and pitch, pitch this show. So you're going to have to, if you're trying to do this, you're going to have to develop a pitch and essentially you're selling the leaders on, on, on what the concept was. So the first year for us, it, it was very difficult and it would be much easier to do the show now that we already know what's possible. But the first year going into it, we kind of had a tier system. We we're like, all right, our first, our first and best uh, option would be, our first choice for this would be a full soundtrack, full lighting package. Um, we'd have multiple shows. We'd have it at this time, you know, and we'd have this size team and we'd have this duration of the show. And then we had like a C, a, a B, a C, a D, you know, and then our D option was like, okay, if none of that can happen and we can't get a soundtrack, we can't get, you know, lighting at the very least, can we get an area cleared out with an, a, a couple operations people to help us just put on this display so you know it was all kind of like conditional and we're working you know and, and, and we're working on a time crunch and we don't know who we're going to be able to have on our team because we don't know who's going to be able to get hired 
you know, who's going to pass their background checks, when they're going to be able to come in for uh, hiring and processing and all that. So there's all these factors that, that play into it. But essentially, right. once they kind of greenlit uh, the show and our general ideas, we got to work and we started, and this is what I tell everyone who, you know, we've had, uh, we worked with um, some people um, from many or uh, several different parks already this year who are trying to put on their own slideshow. And I won't give it away because I want them to be able to make their own announcements when their shows get off the ground um, where they're from. But the first thing I tell them is you got to start with a soundtrack. And Nate, feel free to jump in any time here if I'm, if I'm okay. going off too long. But You're good. You got to start with a soundtrack. And then you got to build from there because it's it's very difficult to, you know, come up with lighting or come up with uh, tricks and stunts and things that make sense with the story or the the audio. If you if you don't have audio, it's very it's very hard to mesh that all together. So you know, the first thing is coming up with a soundtrack. And theme parks use very specific audio usage rights. They have agreements with companies like ASCAP, BMI. These are like large music licensing companies. And as right. long as they control 100% of the song, then you can use the song. So you have to search these online repertories for the songs and make sure they're usable. You know, if it's a song that you know and love since you're a kid or like, a, you know, a single band has performed it, like, for example, a Red Hot Chili Pepper song, it's probably going to be 100% usable. Um, if you are using a song that has been remixed three times and had 10 different collaborators on it, um, chances are at least some portion of that song is going to be owned by some random private guy who's running a studio out of his basement. So you're not going to be able to use that song. So once you find your soundtrack list and you got that finalized usable songs, then we started to get, you know, you know, Gmo was there and, and Nathan was there. And we're, we're kind of like in some cases using socks or, or tape on the ground to kind of mark these things out we had a little soccer whiteboard and we're like writing with a whiteboard and like all right moving here and we're trying to block the choreography so a next step would be to get your choreography and like in your your segments what segments and big tricks are you going to put out there you know we use flashcards and kind of arrange them in a line almost like a storyboard for a movie and then we kind of went from there and said okay i think this would make sense here this would tell this story and then we could progress to this and we made it a progression so it's always getting better and better and better because Sometimes we see slider shows that are like, okay, you know, you get bored after five minutes of the same thing because you've seen it, you started out big and now nothing else is going to hit that mark again because you started out with your biggest trick. Right. So we tried to make it small and develop into something bigger and bigger and bigger until you finally see the biggest stuff at the end. So it's like always keeping it fresh and building. And then, you know, we got with our, our lighting team, we had our lasers, we had our, you know, we, had, we said, okay, we want this helicopter sound to come in, so can we have a sweeping a sweeping helicopter light here, can we have police lights flashing at this scene, this, you know, for this 2021 show, we had a Wild West part, so he's like, okay, we can do like a sunset, kind of like an orange, dusky color, so there's a lot of like our lightning flashes, there's a lot of things that go into it like that that were super fun to get with different teams, and theme parks have all these different teams working on lighting, sound, operations. And so it was really cool to work across all the teams right. and kind of get that show off the ground. And then, and then it was just a matter of, okay, everyone who got approved and they got hired and is now an employee can now come out for our scheduled dress rehearsals. And we did dress rehearsals. And then we did a final rehearsal where we got it all approved with the safety and they love what we were doing. And boom, we had our, our, our first show off the ground. And so it was a huge, mm -hmm. huge, huge honor. Our 2021 show was the most popular um, show across all six flags parks for the fall season this last year and uh so that was a big honor that's a huge accomplishment uh, right there alone it is yeah it's my resume yeah. headliner <laughs> oh yeah uh, oh yeah check out what i did <laughs> <laughs> best show in six flags all across the country fall season <laughs> yeah. and then um, another thing kind of how you asked about just what is it like each night it was absolutely um, – it, it is so difficult. You know, I try to convey this to people who are making their own shows. You're going to be performing for probably eight hours and then also doing a show. So right. you know, it needs to be more choreography-based, less about the tricks. If you're doing this at a convention, sure, you can go for the 12-person the jump. But like you've been scaring for eight hours. You know, you need to make this sustainable so you don't hurt your crew. And, that way know. there's – because I noticed when I was watching you guys, there was always uh, – 
little breaks in between each, you know, set up and everything. So that was enough time to get some breathing room in and kind of totally. recoup and stuff. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I pay everything you're saying. Like, I paid attention to, like, just in my head, just looking. I'm like, okay, this, this is about the time where they're all kind of taking a break. One of them yeah. setting stuff up so it gives everybody a chance to breathe and get back yes. into the focus. Mm -hmm. and what, I mean, what there's people all... don't realize. Go oh, I'm it. sorry. You're good, Mac. Go for it. You realize that you're, you're constantly recalibrating the show every single night. So people are dropping. Some people just like, man, I, I'm feeling sick. I got to go home early. Uh, you know, so we have to recalibrate. And like, okay, how is this, this person going to get covered or whatever? Someone has it scheduled off because they had mm -hmm. a wedding that night or something. And it's just like, boom. You know, we got to like, so we're constantly recalibrating the show and, and adjusting all these things. And that's what yeah. people don't realize. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're always, you know, we're doing a show with nine people tonight and the show was designed for 12 or something like that. Right. Just got to improv yeah. it, man, the best way you can. And you guys did that. I think there was like a couple of nights the two the, that I went. I know you guys were uh, short on some people. And, and and still, I mean, I saw it when it had all the people. And I still, you know, with, with no people. And you guys still figured out a way to keep the entertainment going and keep the audience engaged. And and every time I went, I that was, I made sure I told Rob, we we're staying till this. We got to see the show. No matter how many times I've seen it, no matter what I know it was going down, like it was, it just felt like a different experience every time. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's great. Um, here's here's the thing: that's changed. You got to be you got to be okay with change, and you have to be very flexible and going with the flow. You got to be agile and be able to pivot, because things happen all the time where mm -hmm. you're gonna have to just pivot and make it work. For instance, a great example is like like you said, you have people dropping out. People get people start feeling sick. Oh man, I'm running around. You know, I didn't drink enough water. I don't know if I can do the show tonight. Or maybe something less like more common, which is this: A, like my steel toe just has a huge hole through it, or it fell off. I, I can't fix it. Like I, something X Y Z happened. I need to get my backup gear, which I don't have with me. I just can't perform tonight, right? That kind of stuff happens all the time. Or somebody halfway through the show can't fin I, I can't finish it, you guys, because I need to um I need to get to my like I watched someone's like toe fall off, like their their the recap rip off or something happened where like okay they're out of commission they're gonna have to go fix that they're not gonna be in the rest of the show yeah. you gotta be able to like to be flexible not just in the show going kind of back to the creation i think matt said everything that kind of really goes into like the the kind of the processes of having to get these shows like pitched and approved and worked on but here's one thing as like when it comes to change the the shows that you saw both in 2019 right if you saw them online and then of course like 2021 as well uh and for everyone out there, like i said you can watch it online as well like on youtube those were not the original concepts like whatsoever. Like the one in, and the show in 2021 was probably closer to our original concept um, because we already kind of knew what we could and couldn't do based off of the year before right. that 2019 show. If I could ever find my old notes and like send it to you, you'd be like shocked because like some of that stuff we wanted to do for the original concept was completely different and refined a million and a half different times than what the actual end product was. And a big part of that is due to a couple different reasons. Like I said, you got to be acceptable with change because the fun part of these shows is like the creativity, right? So you can right. create it. That's super fun. And like thinking of bits and thinking of choreography and thinking of soundtrack and, and like thinking of like, Ooh, let's go. Who's going to do what? Yeah. The, the not fun part is budget, right? Okay. Think about this because from a manager standpoint, like Matt and I both have a lot of managerial experience mm -hmm. from a management standpoint, you have to be able to have all this stuff. You got to budget it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if you work at a haunt, you could just go and just start sliding and doing some tricks, you know, as long as like the, the company's okay with that. that that's right. literally how we started the, sh the shows. Like in the first couple of years when we were, Matt was saying we we're sowing the seeds a little bit, it was just like he and I being like, oh, hey, let's go like do some tricks, let's go do some spins, some like simple jumps and stuff just to like, just for fun. And then other people were like, oh, we want to do that too. And then we would kind of have all the sliders. Hey, we're going to meet at this, this time at final scare at this time of the night, like be there. And we're going to do like a little, like a little mini show and, and then them kind of seeing like our director kind of walking over being like, what are they doing? And being like, Hmm, kind of seeing like the appeal of it and people, who, if they were enjoying it or not, you know what I'm saying? Right. It was kind of like, anybody could do that. Like you, you could get together with some of your slider friends and just do that at your time. You know what I'm saying? As long as yeah. like the management's okay with it. But then as far as getting it approved for an actual show, because once money gets involved, like once they're paying for it, besides just your paycheck, like once they're paying for the lights, paying for the sound, right? Because think about it. Like, we, we had a rough idea of the budget. Like they told us like the rough idea of how much we could and couldn't spend on the show, but that was all up to them, right? A lot of that stuff was like, can we get this approved? Can we not? We're constantly, we're, Matt and I, the entire summer, we're back and forth with the, the creative team being like, is this possible? Is this not? Like, can we get this approved? Can we get this approved? Right. Okay, this is not. And then on top of that, going through not just, like the first pitch is obviously the most important, 
but like every every like two to three weeks we'd have to like go back in and, and pitch okay this is the progress this is what we're thinking they, they wanted us to hear it more okay so what's going to happen with this and blah 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 and xyz okay then then you'd have to go to like the director then go to the, the head of corporate events and stuff and then they would say you know what um, we think it's a little bit too long or we don't like that location. We, we want to move it to this part of the park. Like, let's go walk the park. And we, we'd be literally walking the park with somebody being like, we want to have it right here for different X, Y, Z reasons. That'll just be you know, better. And, and being okay. So then we have to go back and then rewrite it. And then, okay, actually we yeah. don't really want anybody with a microphone or any voiceover work. We'd rather you do as little talking as possible. So you have a little bit of an intro, but not very much. Okay. Right. We had a whole script written out. We're going to have a whole story off of it. That all got scrapped. You know what I'm saying? And we had to just, even though we, we were like, oh, this would be so fun. Or Matt and I were like, this, these are really cool ideas. Or like he said, like, especially in 2019, when we were, we were really working with like a lot of different people, people would have ideas and then we'd have to go to and be like, Hey, unfortunately your idea, they, they cut it out. It wasn't our decision, but they said we couldn't do it for whatever reason. We got to have to change it and constantly like reworking and reworking and reworking. So that's, that's like, you know what I'm saying? In, in, a, in a sense, it is kind of fun because you're kind of like working on it. You know, you're getting right. like paid to like make something. But it's like being creative and just having all these like ideas and brainstorming, that's like the super fun part. But then when you have like, you're like, like never be married to an idea, you know what I'm saying? Because then it's just like, it's got to go. Like you, you could love an idea and then it's just like, it's not going to work. Or for instance, you could love an idea, get the proof, try it out. Like I, I've had ideas for like sliding tricks and stuff. Oh, let's try this. It'll be really fun. doesn't work. Just not fine. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that's just too hard. That's like, uh, it doesn't doesn't translate well. Right. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't doesn't look good. People don't think that fits funny. People are, are like that that trick is cool, but we're too exhausted to do that. It's not gonna work. You gotta cut it and then re revise it. And it's it is a lot of work. You know, you can't just go into the simply doing this like like Matt said, this was a years in the making. This was years in the making. Um, and even in 2019, it was very stressful, but we, we were able to get down like a, a good formula. So 2021 making the show was honestly a lot easier. We already had the bones. We already had the structure. We just had to right. like fill in the, fill in the gaps. So then it becomes easier. Once you kind of get your rhythm down, you can start using the same structure. Cause if you look at our two shows, I, I personally think our 2021 show was much better than our 2019 show. Even though I love slides of the night one, I thought slides of the night one was awesome. I think slides of the night two was, was better. Um, and uh, basically every way performing standpoint, I had had more fun performing in it. And then also just from a viewer standpoint, it was more interesting to watch, um, right. but that's all because we had to learn. It's a learning process. You know what I'm saying? Like we didn't get there in one night. We got there in the course of like five years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially the 2021 show talking about it, the entirety of the quarantine. You know what I'm saying? Like we were just like spitball ideas. Like we'd be on, on, on Skype like with, with, with blaze, just like chatting about ideas and chatting about stuff. Oh, this would be kind of cool. Like, Let's make sure to remember that from when we start planning the show. That's kind of fun, you know. We're just talking about stuff all year long and getting to it. Okay, let, let's start, let's start working on it. See what we can and can't get approved, you know. Um, no. And then to a lot of places, if you're trying to get this approved at your haunt or your park that you're working at, you got to keep in mind it's going to come down to a budget. You could have the best idea in the world, but these events only have so much money to put these on. You know what I'm saying? And so the the least amount of money you can make these shows for, the more likely you are to get them approved. It's just, you know, and that's not saying like go cheap, but it's just saying you just got to have the budget for it. You know, you got to be able to pay for it. Also, you're going to not have an official show if you want to do an official, official show, you know. So it, it, there is a lot of factors that goes into it. That's that's just from the creative standpoint, let alone the running it factor. So actually performing in the show, you know, you're thinking of a lot of stuff. You're constantly going through things like like to be honest this year for the show in 2021 or I say last year. Um, I, I didn't have, I had kind of a bum back to be just completely honest with you. I uh, unfortunately got a back injury about a month before we started rehearsals. And I, I had to do a bunch of like rehab on my back, got to the point where I could perform with it, but I, I wasn't able to do a lot of the same tricks I was able to do in, in 2020 or 2019, excuse me. Right. Um, and so I was just, I told every, and I just told everybody I was transparent with like the team and stuff. I just was like, I probably won't be doing as much of the bigger tricks, but I'm going to be like really keeping the time, you know what I'm saying? So for me, like my big role, I feel like this year was even though I wasn't doing a lot of the big tricks and stuff. I was constantly like with people like, okay, like trying to keep people keeping step, keeping time, keeping the rhythm. The other thing that I, I, you know, from like, it's really important to do is I, I'm sure Matt could say the same thing, but I could have told you every single person's part, like probably not anymore. Cause I haven't <laughs> done it in a while, but like 
after our rehearsal week, our, our week of doing rehearsing and stuff, I could have told you exactly where every single person needs to be at the start and at the end of the bit in this and like the choreography and stuff. I knew exactly everyone's spot because sometimes people would be at a spot and I would grab them and just like, you're going to go over there, like run. And I'd throw them. I would like, yeah. I would, I'd whisper real quick. No nope, other side, other side. And they go, Oh crap. And they'd run over or like they would like, sometimes people would, would forget the timing. And so they would be looking at me and I would give people hand signals and stuff because they were, they were waiting for me to be like, because if they ever, ever ever forgot, I was like, if you ever forget, just look at me and I'm going to be like pointing or like giving you like a head nod or something, trying to give you like, you know what I'm saying? So I, I and then it's, it's important to have a couple people who know how to do that because like, like Matt said, you have people dropping out, you know, you might have to have someone, okay, like this person can't be here, but that's okay. In this segment, they go under this person's legs. So instead of doing that, how about you go under, under my legs instead and I'll just, I'll just jump in where that person's supposed to be or what, you know, whatever it is, you right. got to be be ready to, to pivot and to constantly be flexing on it be like and, and flexing where you're going to be and, and what you're going to be doing because a lot can change when you're performing these events you know what i'm saying a lot and that's kind of the fun too as well like I, I don't want to make this sound like it's stressful that's in my opinion that's what i really love about working with live events is that there is that factor of like things change really fast and yeah it's a little stressful but i personally think that's really fun because you got to kind of be on your your on your toes a little bit you know you got to be ready to right. pivot it's kind of fun because every single person has a huge factor to play. You know what I'm saying? Like you kind of have to be really involved in order for this to run smoothly. You know what I'm saying? If you were to work a, a some kind of show or event that gets filmed or televised, that isn't a live event. If you mess up, that's okay. You just try it again. Yeah. But if it's live and people are watching you, everything you do directly affects the outcome of the, the, the show, which is, which is really fun. So it, it's kind of a lot to think about and a lot to go into. No, it really it's, it's a blast. It, no, it, this this conversation right here just really expanded my horizon because I knew there was a lot to go into, but there was I, I wasn't expecting as much as I heard, and I was like, wow, there there is, it's a lot, it's a long process, and yeah, there is a lot of trial and error throughout of it. You got to figure out what's going to work, what's safe enough to work, what gets approved, what doesn't get approved. So it's a lot of. Uh, you know, go, having to go back to the board every time something doesn't work, mm -hmm. you have to change something out. Like, okay, this didn't work, but mm -hmm. this works. So how can we make this work with something else? You know, so exactly. Yeah, yeah no, it's think, it's, um, it's it's all planning. I know exactly how yeah. it is, especially with videos. The same way, it's like, okay, this yeah. works. So what's going to work with this? You know, so trial and error. Yeah. You know, and like I think for us, the biggest, the first thing that we did for the show was we sat ourselves down and we said, realistically, and you could be a little bit harsh here. What are things you like and don't like about the slider shows that we've seen? You know what I'm saying? Um, and I, I've always enjoyed watching a good slider show, like whether it's from the Decay Brigade or Queen Mary or whoever, you know, like the old shows they used to do at Knox. Like I've seen a lot. I've either seen them in person or I've seen YouTube videos. I've seen like hundreds of hours of slider shows. You know what I'm saying? Like I've seen so many slider shows. I've seen a lot. And I started like thinking, okay, what, what do I like? What don't I like? Okay, this section kind of bores me. Why is it boring me though? You know, I like that section. Why did I like that section? That's kind of stuff you gotta start thinking about because mm -hmm. you got You want to make this show something that you're gonna be proud of, but also like you want people to be interested in it. You know what I'm saying? You want it to be exciting. So, like Matt was saying, constantly. Our big note was constantly be building on ourselves. We were kind of at the point where we we're like, okay, we've seen slider shows where every single member jumps one person, and every right. single member jumps two people. Then every single member jumps three. Then okay. Then some people stop. Then everyone like then like you know half of them jump four. Then right. half of that group jumps five, and so on and so forth. Do you get like these big twelve person jumps that like maybe one person completes, and that's super exciting. But to get to that point, you've been watching these people jumping people for like ten minutes, and yeah. then it's kind of like ah, okay, like it's no longer fun. The twelve person jump, hey, that's cool. But or for instance, we've seen slider shows where the first thing they do is like, it's like for instance. You know, you, you do a limbo bar, you're doing the low bar and people are sliding under the low bar, but someone will just go out before anyone else slides underneath the low bar and they just jump the limbo bar, mm -hmm. which is like super cool. Wow. That's super impressive. I think that's impressive. I, I can't do that. Like blaze learned how to do that. I never learned how to do that. Um, but then now after I saw that super cool trick, now I'm just watching people sliding under the limbo bar and it's less exciting. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like where we kind of landed with, with our show structure. We're like, we want ours to be like this. We don't want to follow that. We want it to be different. And I think this will be, in my opinion, more more fun for audiences. Now, whether it was or not, that's subjective because that's, that's, that's everyone's opinion on it. But right. that's just kind of where we were standing when we were making it. We're like, we want it to kind of have a flow. We want to start small, go big. Like once you do jumps, 
you can't make jumps a, a big thing anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like once mm -hmm. I've jumped one person, it's no longer going to be this big, exciting thing when you jump one person. You know what I'm saying? After that, yeah. it's like, you got to keep, keep building it. If I jump five people in the very beginning of the show, if we do a segment where I'm now jumping one, nobody cares. Oh, nobody yeah. Cares. They saw me jump five people. No, no one wants to see me jump one because they know I could do more. So yeah. start it small, especially when people like you go to these haunt conventions, people there like at the gate brigade, they have to go big, 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 because a lot of these people that go to like, you know, midsummer scream or these conventions have seen a lot of slider shows so that a gate brigade are constantly innovating new ways to like go bigger. That's mm -hmm. kind of like their whole thing. Like, go big, go technical. We're going to be really clean on our, on like our delivery of our tricks for us at fright fest. People have never really seen this style of performance before. So we were like, okay, we can go smaller because we're all exhausted anyway. So let's just go smaller. We don't have to do these massive tricks because we're not trying to do a Decay Brigade show. That's that's their thing. We're doing our own our, our own show, right? So let's go smaller, but we're going to make a big deal about it because people won't necessarily know the difference unless they've seen a lot of these shows. And right. even if they have seen a lot of these shows, then we're going to add in some bits. We're going to add in some uh, uh, timed like music and stuff to kind of entertain the people who have seen these big tricks. You know what I'm saying? Because for instance, you... You come to our, our sliders of the night show, you're going to watch us jump at most like three or four people. That's in due to a couple things. First of all, the ground that we're sliding on isn't that good. You know, we're exhausted. We've been scaring all night and you know, we don't want to get hurt because that could potentially jeopardize the show coming back in the future if mm -hmm. we have someone getting hurt. So why even risk that? Let's just go a little bit smaller make a big deal about it. You know what I'm saying? Like you're never going to see a, a Fright Fest, a, six, a Magic Mountain Fright Fest slider show someone jumping 12 people. If you right. want to see that, go watch. That's what I'm saying. Go watch it at Cape Brigade. I, I, I recommend going to check their show out because you're going to see some crazy, awesome tricks. If you're looking for something different, like more bit oriented and more music oriented, like more, you know, that's, that's kind of the show that we're going for is going to be more, more along those lines, you know? Um, so that's kind of like the whole thought process when it comes into this. Um, I got like, and I think, I think I got wait, three, go three words for, Every time I saw that show, and that's yeah, Green Clown. <laughs> <laughs> like you, yeah, there you was. I've never yeah, seen anyone hype fun. himself up that much, and I, and I was like, I need to take more inspiration off this guy. He <laughs> loved the way he hypes himself up. This is like, I need him to be my hype man. Oh gosh, you know, yeah, you know, what I'm saying that that's like the fun of our show. People are like, hey, I love the coffin dance. Hey, I love this. You know, yeah. I've never had someone come to me and go, whoa, your trick was so much better than Decay Brigade because they they're never going to be. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like. Those guys are doing some crazy stuff that I I will probably never learn how to do or just I just don't choose to do because you know what I'm saying like that's their thing they're they're the ones that are pioneering like the big trick we're we're trying to make our completely different show because that's another thing too we don't want to be compared to anybody and we don't want to compare their shows to ours because they're completely different we want that's what we wanted we wanted a totally unique experience that anybody can come in whether you've never seen a sliding show before or you've seen a bunch and you could still have fun watching it. Right. That was kind of like our, that was kind of like our mission statement, you know, yeah. that was kind of like our end goal. And then we knew where we were going to start it. And then you got to kind of just connect the dots from there. hundred percent. I mean, you guys overall, you guys have had such a thus far fantastic haunt career. It seems like, and, and the stories that I'm hearing, even before I got to see you guys in person, um, it is just is awesome. And, and to hear it where it goes from here, that's, that's for you guys to decide, but I, I, I know whatever you guys do, it's going to be 100% I'm always supporting. And, um, you know, it, it, it was great to see you guys, and I, I really enjoyed what I saw. But if, if you guys can both define your entire haunt career thus far in one word, what would that word be? Wow. Uh, that, that's, that's a deep a hard, one. That's a hard one. You know yeah. what? <laughs> First thing uh, – no, I'm not even going to say that because now I'm like looking at like five different words. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I would say for me, it is, it's something to do with energy. I don't want to, I'm not going to lock in as that as my word because I just started thinking about this question, but mm -hmm. something, to, something along those lines. Um, for me, it's always been about that, that energy. Yeah. The entertainment factor. Yeah. Okay. I'm starting to warm up on that as my answer now. So <laughs> there you go. It's always been the hype. Maybe that's more of the word. It's the hype. It's the hype out there. It's like you're hyped up to be there. You're meeting thousands of cool new people. Um, you're, you're part of a, a big community. There's so much energy that goes into it. So you're constantly hyping people up. You're bringing joy to people through that. You know, people can see your, your energy and then your fellow 
co-workers your right. the other actors in the air, scare zone beat off of that um people come through when they're on break from other areas mazes ushers even wherever to come watch and they get inspired by that and then we do the same we go watch them and just oh it's inspiring it was fun you know so it's kind of that constant hype whether it's your coworkers, the people you're entertaining uh, the people you meet, the the um, the content creators like yourself, it's just constantly that there's just an energy that's kind of addicting about the whole the whole year. And and for a lot of people, you know, their whole they model their whole life around this one time of year. I, I mean, I know we do. Like a, a lot of the way we would schedule things would be all about that season. So. I think, you know, because it leads one thing leads into another and then it leads into the holiday season. It's just the busiest, craziest, most dynamic time of the year. So I think it's, I think for me, I'm going to go with hype. That's a good one. It's appropriate too. I think it works out perfect for you guys, honestly. (laughs) Okay. So for for mine, I was thinking about it. I'm going to, I'm going to say mine would be experience. And I'm not talking experience as I'm like, oh yeah, like look how many years or how many hours I've logged in doing that. I'm talking experience as of like, what kind of an experience are you having and what kind of an experience are you creating for people as well? I think, I think that's a huge one. Cause for me, like I was saying earlier, one of the main reasons we stayed for Fright Fest was just the culture that first year and the people that welcomed us in the veterans who were like so cool with us. And that's the same kind of energy we try to carry on when we were now the veterans welcoming new people being like, hi, welcome, how fun. Oh my gosh, this is a great place. Also come check out, we're having an after party. You should come with us. Like, it's going to be so much fun. Like, come check it out. Come hang out. Meet new people. It's all about the experience, like, what what you're having. And, like, I think that's, for me, it's been a huge thing. That's why I keep coming back year after year is, like, I myself am having an amazing time, such a fun time doing it. But also, what kind of an experience am I putting out for other people to enjoy? Like, what, what kind of an experience do I look for when I go to haunts? And how can I deliver that to people going through when I'm performing? Right. You know, like what are some stuff that I want to see? What kind of experience do I want? And how can I make that for other people as well? So that's for all of the, the shows and all of the, the jobs I've worked for. It's kind of been it. And all like the entertainment and events I've done has always been like, what kind of an experience can I give these people that I would also like to see or like that I think that they would enjoy? Because they're they're paying money to be here. They're, they're going out of their way to come see this event, to come see me specifically sometimes in certain cases. Right. So what kind of an experience can I give them? When content creators come through, when people with cameras or people come to watch uh, pass holders when they would come to Fright Fest and sit in our scare zone every single weekend, what kind of an experience can I give them, right? What kind of video can I help them create that people are going to be seeing all over the internet, all over YouTube? You know, what kind of stories can I tell on these podcasts? Like, right, what kind of experience can I give out? Or what kind of experience can I give these people sitting here watching me? because they've seen this before. So they're going to want something new, right? They're going to want to see, see something different. So I think it's all about the experience, just both being in it for me and then also for, like output, like both input and output, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah, 100% does. That's a huge, 100%. that's like, probably for me the biggest thing I could think of. And that's kind of where I put all my time and energy into for me is like, is just like, I'm, I'm not trying to think too much about what I'm doing. I'm trying to think of me and like the whole, you know, like how are people going to be, be perceiving me and having this experience with me as being like the one entertaining them for the evening. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, boys, I, I'm pretty sure I, I know for a fact we can go two more hours uh, yeah, with what sure. we have here, and yeah. and and this isn't the end. We'll get you guys back on uh, shoot the shit next. We'll do that one. Uh, <laughs> that, that'll be the next one because I guarantee you we we'll, we'll just talk about Randy and everything. Like the entire time we were doing this podcast, I, I just kept looking at Nate and I was like, "Damn, does he look like Rooster from Top Gun Maverick?" <laughs> oh man just give him thank some you, aviators man thank and you. he's good thank you stash. more stash than ever before you know i uh, love it man Ooh. i love it love it so much no you get you <laughs> boys you. you you guys uh have entertained thousands upon thousands of fans and um continue to do so today and Wherever you guys end up, I'm looking forward to seeing what's next for you guys and in, in the haunt career and stuff. So I, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a big supporter. I always will be, and uh, I, I just, I look forward to seeing what's, what's the next grand adventure for you guys. But you guys, uh, I don't think you've realized how many people you've probably made laugh, how many people you've scared the shit out of, how many people you've maybe inspired, and how many people you just, 
made leave the event saying, "Hey, do you remember those two uh, those two clowns that were just doing the most outrageous things? Yeah, that was probably the best thing of my night." Um, you guys, I don't, I don't know how, I don't know if you guys realize how many people you guys have touched and 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 really have influenced a lot of people to uh, to to do this. You know, I mean, I, I hear stories about you guys all the time. And and it's all good. I, I've never heard one bad story from you guys, and that's that says something. For all the years that you've guys done this, that the that you guys continue to to give everyone 110 percent, and and continue to to change the the game of, of haunt. I mean, you guys are bringing something to the table. Like I've said continuously over this this whole show that I've just never seen before. Um, and, and to, to see something new like that is, is kind of special because, you know, the same old stuff is, is cool and all, and it's fun to see it every year, but to see something different is always fun. And, and I think that's why I made my trips back to Six Flags Fright Fest so many times. Um, regardless of the drive, I was just like, I'm just going to go have a good night and it's going to be fun. And I, it was every single night I walked out with satisfied, smiling, and I couldn't wait to get home to look at the footage to see what I can make and, and whatnot. And, and we, we did a lot of content with Six Flags. We, we, we spread it across multiple platforms, uh, multiple pages. Um, and it, it was just an honor to, to get the name out there even more. So with all that being said, I just want to say to you two, thank you so much for uh, giving me one of the greatest uh, haunt experiences ever and one of the greatest first trips to Six Flags Fright Fest ever. I really appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Of course, man. I'm, yeah. I'm thankful to hear that. I, I mean, that really, it really does mean a lot to hear all that. And, and, and I appreciate you, you know, and the, and the great content you're putting out there. And so I, I am excited to see, you know, likewise where you go with it in the future. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a really great experience this season for sure. 100%. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for my end as well, man. That's really nice words. Definitely like, like you, you don't think about it sometimes when you, when you talk about like the scope of the amount of people that we've probably bumped into over the years, it's, it has truly been an incredible ride, you know, working at Fright Fest. I'm glad you had a great time. Um, and like, like Matt said, thank you for making the content and just being there to watch and support because it's, it's the people like you that kind of keep us, keep us energized, keep us keep going, you know? Right. So, I, 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 I appreciate it. It's fun. I love doing it. I just I just love pointing the camera and shooting, and hopefully I get uh, – ho I didn't even have to say hopefully when I went to Six Flags. I was like, I know I'm going to get some good stuff. It just depends what I'm going to get and what I'm going to have fun with. But, no, guys, so before we end this, I'm going to ask you the last and final question of the, of the show, and, and sometimes it's a hard one for most people, but, you know, uh, I know, I know Nate, you guys are big movie guys, so it might not be. Um, and I know there's a lot of subgenres and stuff, but what is your favorite scary movie? Nice. That is a good one. Uh, for good me, uh, for me, I'm, I always, I always juggle between the two, but uh, I do love the, the '80s, early '90s kind of stuff. So I'm gonna go with uh, some of the most inspirational for me, which was either Friday the Thirteenth Part Six, which I feel like is the most quintessential '80s, fr you know, Friday the Thirteenth type film. It's everything you, you'd want when you're watching it, you know, as far as what you'd expect. Yeah. And then just the atmosphere is really inspiring for, I think, a lot of uh, pop culture stuff came from that particular one. And then I also juggle that with uh, American Werewolf in London, <laughs> another one of those. Just Such classic. a beautiful film. Yes. Yes, it Man. was. The Friday the 13th Part 6, I've never heard that, and that, that is cool that you mentioned the later sequels because I don't think anyone – as cheesy and as as corny as they were, they still had some iconic kills and iconic <laughs> looks and and feels. So yeah, that's that's a good. Those are good answers right there. What about you, um, Mr. Nate? All right. So for me, I I've changed it around quite a bit over the years. Um, I've juggled with like I, I I'm a huge fan of the Halloween series, but I I now like over the last couple months have changed my scope for a couple different reasons. But my my favorite scary movie. I don't, I don't have exactly one. I'm still trying to figure out exactly which one of these three it is. But it's either going to be Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn, or Army of Darkness. All three of those movies are, are just hilarious and great in different ways. And I have been just like learning more and more about those, those films for different reasons. Nice. Um, mainly, it's just been my insight on just, just like Sam Raimi and his career, but also just Bruce Campbell in general is like, he has become one of my favorite actors. I think he's so hilarious, and I love the direction how they've they have three totally unique movies where you have one that's just like, 
just gross and scary. The next one is like a little silly, but also kind of scary. And then you get to the third one, which is just not scary at all. And it's just completely ridiculous. But it's got the best one-liners. Yeah, it's got great catchphrases. (laughs) It's got like hilarious acting and just like silly bits that just are, they have no place being there. Yeah. But literally somebody budgeted for that stuff to be put into a movie. (laughs) I am dying. I am dying so much to play that video game. I I can't wait to get it. I've been playing it lately. It's been a blast. Yeah. Maybe we got to do some uh, Twitch streams on that one. Yeah. I've been streaming. I just started streaming it. So uh, definitely you got to jump on with me. No. A lot of fun. Um, I highly suggest to you, you've probably seen them, you probably have it. This one for sure I know a lot of people have seen. Uh, I think one of Bruce Campbell's also uh, another great roles is uh, Sky High. He was great in that film. Um, Sidekick. Yeah, Sonic Boom. That's one of the greatest characters ever made. What if I didn't tell you it was your clone, but it was your evil clone? (laughs) Um, And one of my – and I don't hear a lot of people talk about this movie, but uh, one of my favorite movies he ever did was uh, Bubba Hotep. Bubba Hotep, yeah. Yeah, where he he's the Elvis. He's supposed to be the real Elvis, and he never died. And they fight a demon. And it's it's a great time. It's a fun film. It's just so it's, wacky. It's I, B I love movie how at his finest. He always is for those kind of like those kind of movies. Yeah, yeah, he's great. And then you know he had, I mean, it was it was just great to see him on screen recently again. I won't say what project, but if you guys have seen the movie, then you know. Yep. I yep, feel like it's have. been long enough. He was in Doctor Strange. Yeah, he's in Doctor Strange. It's a hilarious, a hilarious cameo. Yeah, he, he's been in almost every every Sam Raimi movie. That's that's yeah. kind of like another reason why I've really been enjoying the Evil Dead, just the original series a lot. Like the reboot was like not my favorite, but just the original three. Yeah, really great. I, and just because of like a couple of different things, like the first the first of which being just the relationship between Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, which is just so funny and how like they knew each other from like I believe high school and college. Yeah, and like oh let's make let's make a movie together. And they just so happened to create the Evil Dead, which just like, you know, like imagine making a, a movie that was so campy, budget, dude. a tiny budget that took like them two years to make, that like took them forever to make in like a tiny cabin somewhere in Tennessee. They dude. said that <laughs> did so well that he ended up directing the Spider-Man movies. Like, are you and now a Doctor Strange movie from Marvel? Like, can yeah. you imagine that being like just some dude from like somewhere out there being like, oh yeah, I got the small budget of movie. It's just a hit, and then oh, like, and, within, and, within 30 years, 40 years, you're now directing a multi-million-dollar like million dollar Marvel movie. Wha- and just, you, I, watch, you watch Doctor Strange, and you see all those yeah. Sam Raimi aspects in there. It was like a combination Humans of everything he's everything. done thus far. Yeah. yeah. Like from Straight the up. from the little cutaways from when characters are talking and popping up on the screen <laughs> to, of course, when you see the camera angles of Evil Dead, and I was like – Oh, there's and I, and I understand this was supposed to be Marvel's first horror film, and what better person to pick to do that honor than the man yeah. who created one of the greatest trilogies of all time? Yeah. And and you know Sam Raimi is one of my favorites. I when I got the news he was gonna do Doctor Strange, I was like, Raimi is back in the in the Marvel universe, man. He is back. Mm-hmm. You can't keep him away, man. He better do Doctor Strange three, or I'm gonna riot. I know. Um, here I'm with you on that one. Here here. Yeah. I love Rami, but yeah, gentlemen. Uh, first and foremost, I want to plug in your guys' Instagram at uh, ff underscore exile bros. Um, you guys uh, go follow them. That's you can go see all up to date of of their characters and stuff and and everything. And yeah, go show, go show them some love, man. Um, I love these guys are just so talented and stuff. And I'm I'm glad you guys. Uh, I'm glad we can. Uh, get the time to do this. I know we're all very busy as far as work schedules go, as far as, you know, the personal lives go and everything. We all have our own agendas, but we we finally made time. And I was like, I got to wake up at 6 a.m., but I don't even care. Like, I will stay up, you know, all night to do this shit with them. But Dang. you you Thanks, guys uh, you guys you. are truly I'm, – I'm glad to call you guys friends. I'm glad to uh, have you guys part of my life. And you guys uh, keep doing you guys, man, because don't ever stop being you and don't ever let the imagination die because as soon as that happens, we all grow up and uh, – I don't think we're all ready to grow up yet. Even though we're adults, we're not. St- we're still not ready to grow up. Never, never, nope. man. Yeah, <laughs> never can happen. But never, dude. Matt, Nate, I really appreciate the time. Uh, you guys, fucking legends, man. Just remember that. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, dude. Thank you for having Thanks, us. Man. Yeah, yes. man. But uh, with all that being said, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the podcast. If you guys did, hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell notification be where every time we put up a new video. Check us out on Instagram at the Knights of Horror, Twitter at Knights of Horror. I'm your host, Anthony Zaragoza, and I'll see you guys next week for another podcast.